There you go. Wrong lever! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tales from Felfair Matter. A spooky campaign where we do spooky shit. Last we left off, all of you were doing not so spooky shit in a little town. Um, mostly revolving around getting camera equipment, being insulted by teenagers, and collecting caffeine. Coffee yeah, break! You know, standard stuff. Yeah, we yeah, gotta have our coffee. Standard stuff. So, uh... So where do I'm we go from here? Well... Um, as uh, as we recounted before the session started, Raymond was off buying a I'm sorry I disregarded your religion gift for Father David McDougal. It's also low-key a I'm sorry I keep forgetting your name right. gift. Yeah, I'm looking that up and it was apparently, oh yeah, that was end of September, <laughs> an entire month ago. It's been quite a while. Oh, wow. None of it's... us really remember too well what we were doing. It's been like five weeks ago. It's almost like we're all adults who have lives. It's terrible. Exactly. Just who needs absolutely that shit? horrid. Yeah, who needs that too shit? Too much Animal Crossing. <laughs> Paddy, Jonah, and Father David uh, were together, as far as I remember, in the um, in the um, camera shop, Leonard's Lenses. No, we were walking out. We were going to the pet shop so Father David could get some more cat food. Right! Cat food, not caffeine. Right. Same thing. Yes. Well, so Why not both? Be, uh, you were getting some cat food because evidently Segator is a very, very hungry boy and manages He's a very to empty lad. almost everything. Like the ravenous badger creature he is. Uh. Meanwhile, Dr. Celeste LeBlanc was in the Sealington McLam Public Library, owned by Quincy Rufus, the librarian, <laughs> trying to find some records on the previ uh, previous inhabitants and owners of Felfair Manor. Because if there's anything you can find in a tiny local public library, it's definitely gossip on the higher class. Awesome. Rumors. So, Everyone's favorite. Dr. Celeste LeBlanc, you are in this relatively tiny and, well, let's be honest, not very, mm, not very well-traveled library. It doesn't seem as though it gets a whole lot of use. Most because the majority of people who come in there do so with the newspaper and a cup of coffee because the pub was full. <gasps> Surprisingly enough, coffee is not uh, is not strictly outlawed. There's a sign that says no drink, but uh, Quincy Rufus apparently doesn't do anything about it. There are coffee stains on multiple of the uh, of the tables. You even see a few of the villagers sitting around enjoying their morning brew with the newspaper. Well, coffee isn't a drink. Coffee is coffee. Exactly. Coffee isn't a drink, it's a human right. Yeah. Get it right. It's not like it's Irish coffee. coffee. <laughs> like coffee is what we use to fuel our scanning vision. Mm, exactly. And speaking of such, as you walk down the hallowed aisles full of nothing, uh, full of naught but knowledge of the ancients, I would like you to roll some library use. First roll I mean, of was... the session. Here we go. I mean... That's fine. Uh, if t after this, I was just gonna go ask the whoever was on staff for the librarian to exactly what I needed. Very but yes, nice. sure, I'll roll library. So is that 50, 52, 62. And it's, I think it's one. What is it? Do you have your sheet open? I mean, I do. It's 62, but I'm trying to remember if I need to roll over it or under it. Under it. You need to roll. roll under. Uh, that would be a no. No. Unfortunately, 
the spines are so faded and the order of the library so chaotic that you can't really seem to find much of anything. Luckily, the librarian, Mr. Quincy Rufus, is sitting behind the desk, engulfed in his own newspaper. Uh, hello? He also drinking a coffee? He looks up at you, over his half-moon glasses. Ah, yes, hello. What can I help you with? Yes, uh, I'm Dr. Celeste LeBlanc. I was trying to see if I could find more information about uh, who exactly lived in Telfair Manor. I'm doing some history research on the place. I see. As well as one of the people that are currently living there right now. Right. Well, we unfortunately um, won't have anything on current inhabitants, I'm afraid. Our records oh, okay. don't really keep... Our, rec our records aren't really all up to date. Most because we're not allowed to have anything that's considered... Um, that's considered, shall we say, sensitive public information about living people. We do have oh. quite some records about the previous inhabitants, though. Which oh. which uh, it, it, period the... are you thinking of? Uh, all of them. When, whenever, from when the, the house was built to as far up to now as you have records of. Uh, I see. So that'll be a general history of the manor. Um, yes, come with uh, me. He stands up and takes you to a shelf full of very, very big, very dusty tomes with spines that look like they could break the backs of elephants. He fingers over a few of them, thinks for a moment, and pulls one out. This one. It is a general uh, encyclopedia of royal families in, uh, in the area. I'm not certain how much you know of the manor. Uh, a fair amount from previous research that I've done, um, but we, as far as I'm aware, I only know of three, I think? I see. Let me just check my notes real quick. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I know of only just a few of the owners. Uh, Lord, Lord and Lady Felfair, who were the original founders of the place. Alistair Prowley, and Gregory Hansen, and uh, one other that I don't know the name of, and then the current owners, Brett and Mary Farthings, that we are renting the place from. I see. You'll find everything you need to know about Lord and Lady Felfair in this tome. Uh, Mr. Prowley is... Uh, quite a bit later on, I'm afraid, and you might find more about him by simply searching the internet. He had some published works, but we're not really in the habit of keeping such books around here. I didn't know if you guys had, like, a... I didn't know if anyone... If you kept, like, a sort of public record of the people who lived here before for an for the just for the town in general to see if we could figure out who see if I can figure out who else might have owned the manor mm, well we do keep public records of uh, inhabitants it's going to be quite a bit of work for you to to weed out exactly the ones who lived in the manor just using those I'm afraid um well that's <laughs> Well, that's what I got my degree in, so... Well, the research in that is... Case. Yeah. In uh, that case, please come with me. Uh, what about... What do you know about Gregory Hansen? Just offhand. Unfortunately, the name doesn't really ring a bell. It's... The only thing that I'm aware of is that he... used to be a professor of the paranormal, but... Someone attacked him, and someone attacked him in Felfair Manor when he was uh, the current owner. Oh, 
Let me see. That does sound a little bit familiar. At least that's what we got. At least that's the information I got from Lydia. <laughs> over at the camera shop. Ah, yes, Lydia. She would be one to run with such rumors. Well, they're not really rumors. She's surprisingly well-researched, that young one. Oh. Regardless, I do believe that the incident you speak of might be mentioned in, well, this very tone I have here. He hands you the gigantic book. Yes. Books. As if memory serves, the the perpetrator was a, uh, a semi-noble blood in this area. It was really quite the scandal at the time, as far as I recall, but my memory is lacking in that particular area, I'm afraid. Oh, for who attacked Gre Oh, who attacked Gregory Hansen? Exactly. Oh, I see. I do believe just, I the newspapers tried to keep it hushed up. But then again... Probably did. Probably to keep local panic down to a minimum, but... Probably, and probably also to retain the good name of the, uh, of the local nobility. Yeah. It happens. There's always also... an ulterior motive like that. And it also messes with the history of... It also messes with trying to research histories of places, too. Oh, don't I know it. Well, uh, this is what I can think of off the top of my head. But if you would like me to, I could always have a little bit of a look around the books. See if I can sniff out anything else. Uh, yes, if you wouldn't mind. Um, um one other thing while I'm... You wouldn't happen to know who was the owner after Gregory Hansen, would you? Well, like I said, I don't really remember when that was, but mm. let me see. He rolls a mental library use as I find my notes. Whoever owned it after him was the one that repaired the peacock room window. And honestly, having just a log of who owned the house in general gives us a good idea of what of the history of the place. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. And a I, jumping point. I, I do know that the ones who repaired the peacock window were, as a matter of fact, Mr. Prowley and his wife. He did a so number of renovations to the house, as far as I recall. Oh, I, we've seen a number of his. We've seen a number of his sculptures that have oh, that were remained in the house in the attic. Those. Uh, those. Terrible things. Not particularly a, a renowned artist. That <clears throat> a bit ghastly, but... Mm. Well, ghastly is one way of saying it. So, Alistair probably owned the house after Gregory Hansen? Well, if... Uh... If my memory regarding the general year of the murder that happened in the house is to be uh, is correct, then yes, I do believe that checks out. Right, I can reorganize some of that some of that in my notes then. Well, that's, uh, that honestly sounds quite splendid. There's nothing quite as good as well-organized notes. He looks uh, into the yeah. camera. God, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's loud. Are you okay there? You're not I'm, blowing I'm out okay. your own ears, are you? No, I'm okay. It was Coops. Coops came in, and I think Coops was louder than I was expecting. <laughs> Than I I'm just gonna back Coops off just a little bit. How dare you? That's my Coops you're talking about there. That's fair, but I was not the one who changed any volume or control of yours. Where was I? <laughs> you never know. Coops was no, the ghost all along. 
damn straight. Okay. The call was that... coming from poops all along. So, we now have a better, we now have a more organized timeline of owners! Yay! And. Okay. Which means there's so, there's got to be some more owners in between Gregory Hansen and Lord and Lady Felfair that we don't know about. Because that's a large window from 1845 to 1967. Oh, yeah, that's a huge amount. Uh, do you know when Alistair Prowley, uh, Alistair Prowley attained ownership of uh, Felfair and Renner? Oh, yes. Uh, late 1960s, I believe. The late 1960s? Okay. Probably just after Gregory Hansen. Hmm. Yeah. How, yeah. how long was Gregory Hansen in the... How long was Gregory Hansen the owner of Felfair Manor? <laughs> well... You keep asking me, but I keep telling you I don't really know much of this man. I know. This, I'm sorry. I, I would love to help you. But unfortunately, this is where my knowledge falters. It's, it's okay. That's where the books come in handy. Indeed. One can always trust a good book. Book. I have a weird desire in my brain to harass this librarian man. I'm not even there. Did you harass him? He's a sweet man. Let's, he yes, has done nothing but... You go ahead. He's done nothing but help us. It's, Coops, it's just because he sounds like Jonathan Sims. No, it sounds like... He... <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. It's okay. It's um, right. I'm assuming he's. I'm assuming he's pulling books for me. Oh yeah, I mean, he got you the. Um, he got you the general uh, encyclopedia of uh, nobility in the area. Right. And, and then he also got you the town records of uh, births, basically, between. Perfect. Oh, let's see. Between. A about uh, the 1700s and up until the 1930s. Oh boy. Yep. It's a lot. That and is he also, perfectly fine. He also fine. looks again and then, uh, takes a, and then detracts one of the volumes, hands you the rest. I don't think you'll be needing anything before... Uh, 1810. Seems uh, that no, probably. House was built. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, and honestly, any if you have any other books that you think might help, I would be more than willing to. Well, I would be like more than I happy said, to. I can't really think of any that we have in the library. However, if you'd like me to, I could try and see if I could order a copy of uh, or two of uh, Proudy's work, just to give uh, you a little yes. bit of material on the man. Uh, yes, please. That would be more than perfect. <laughs> Very well then. I'll see what I can do. Do you and have a me. way that I can contact you? Uh oh. Uh, yes, here is my phone number. Uh, and I'll scribble out my phone number for him. Ah, perfect. Thank you very much. No problem. And remind me, you've been so helpful. I, I owe you coffee later. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. You know, if if your library isn't against coffee. Oh, that, no. Of, of course there is no drink allowed within these hallowed walls. 
he very gently uh, takes a cup that was sitting on the desk and puts it down at the, the desk. I'm hiding my own coffee cup behind my back. <laughs> he gives you a bit of a grin. But, uh, uh yes, uh, but this should at least give me a very good start. Well, I'm more than happy to have been able to help. I'll be contacting you, uh, Dr. LeBlanc. It really is a quite, interesting, it. Uh, quite interesting subject you're working on. I, I have a bit of a hobby in the paranormal, and luckily my studies in most architectural history kind of tends to lead me in that direction a little bit, especially with some of the more... Uh, how do I put it? More colorful houses? <laughs> well, I'm definitely looking forward to you talking my ear off about that. Oh, I already know. I, I've, I already have quite a bit of information as far as Lord and Lady Felfair, but this should help me flesh out, flesh out at least to more of my notes. Wonderful. <clears throat> and again, I shall be contacting you. All right. For now, I'm... for now, though, I do believe that Farmer Wilson managed to spill his uh, noddy, non-existent coffee. <laughs> I'll be. Uh... I'll, I'll, s be I'll see you later. You have a and they day. were roommates. Oh my God! You they too. Were roommates. All right. Bye. All right. Perfect. I have readjusted the notes in the notes and clues section. Perfect. To reflect our new findings. And meanwhile, do you uh, do you guys have anything you particularly want to do in the um, in the pet shop outside of just buying um, cat food? Other than just plain old character interaction? Nah. Fair enough. I mean, that's basically all we're doing here. Take um, some pet fish and juggle them. Juggle or jiggle? Both is fine. Both. Yeah, good, 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 good. You can do either. Gently grabs the fattest little hamster you can find and just like hold it in your hand. And just jiggle, 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 jiggle. <laughs> I feel like this is body shaming. It kind of is. Yeah. It's not. It's body appreciation. <laughs> it's not, clearly not. Clearly not. I'm not sure how I would react if like some random foreigner showed up in my pet store and started like jiggling hamsters and joking about how thick they were. That's <laughs> 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 I would point in. <laughs> Just compare to yeah, look at us. Compare to he is. compare to thickness of different animals in there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so just thick with three C's. <laughs> this answer's fucking dummy thick. Dummy thick. <laughs> yes, excellent chunk on this one, but one, uh, but not so good thickness score. Please leave. Please. I'm Please. Call the I'm, I'm begging you. I don't get paid enough to put up with this bullshit. Please just leave him alone. You're scaring the dogs. Why are you doing this? Because, because it frightens you. Oh, the slutty bullshit. Because we we all know the thickest animals would be the guinea pigs. Obviously. Yeah. And who knows if it's an exotic animal pet shop, maybe capybaras. So thick guinea pigs. I guinea thick. don't oh, think. Guinea I don't think a pet shop in rural England will sell capybaras. I'd be very surprised if they do. <laughs> oh, you have very little idea what goes on in rural England. <laughs> yeah, we only weird shit, I assume. Just Let's go out I... into the nearest field. You'll hear over the uh, you'll hear over the glens a froggy bit of small bifty with a four leggings. <laughs> no one wants four to. <laughs> I wonder why no one wants to buy my dog sized rodents. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, Raymond, uh, <laughs> you murder noted me about what you wanted to get for Father David. Do you uh, do you have it? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, <laughs> I'm in 
Ronald's Riotous Records. I'm fucking not. <laughs> just oh, making up God. names. I'm just making up names in this one. I went into Ronald's Riotous Records to buy a record player. And some classic... Make such alliteration, it's gonna have to be canon. And some classic... Um, um, uh, oh, fuck. What's the word? Um, Beatles? No, 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 no. no. Uh, vinyl. Vinyl records. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a really old like well it doesn't have to be really old it's still made, but I really wanna wanna buy a record player a classic one, and some vinyl records with like the classics I know and that I think, uh, Father David would appreciate. Completely forgetting that Father David is, like what in his early thirties at most <laughs> like he's very young actually. <laughs> You're telling me that Father David doesn't look into vinyl, doesn't listen to vinyl records. I don't. I forget. He would. The man he doesn't, would. Own, the the man doesn't own a smartphone. No, he would. But it's, it's just that he isn't. He is not the like the actual age of a boomer, right? It's just it's a mindset for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's so, so I'm gonna spend like the um, built by the church. Yeah, I'm gonna spend like what did I say? Like two hundred fifty bucks on like records. Let's make that pounds. And that would be let's see, two hundred fifty pounds and use the I spent like <laughs> Jesus three hundred and forty dollars apparently. Okay. Soon enough, Raymond will eventually learn what the value of money is. He will not. That is not a thing that will happen <laughs> at all. <laughs> when he runs out of money, he will understand. He will me. not run out of money. I have assets worth one and a half million, and <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I haven't even scratched. I haven't even scratched my cash reserves. This is ins it's insanity. Clearly is. Anyway, the assets. anyway, I'm spending three hundred and forty dollars or two hundred fifty pounds on uh, a record player and a uh, a good number of records. I will have them uh, packaged like a gift, nice little bow on top with like a little, you know, like gift wrapping made out of I don't know I need music to, notes. I need. I need to know what records you buy him. I, you will know later. You will know later. It's fine. Well, you did. No, uh, I wanted to, yeah, you did have one I, particular record that I'm going to remind you of. Oh no, I know, I know. But I, I don't want to. I don't want to tell the others. <laughs> nice. You break? Did you break one of his records when I wasn't paying attention? What? No. I'm just. I'm just buying things I think he would like because I want to be nice. Be and nice. And if he doesn't like them, well, that's on him. You know, fuck him. Whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna have it. I have it. I'll have it gift wrapped. I'll pay in cash, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's probably better than the my original idea of buying him a giant golden cross. <laughs> Sounds about right. Although it would be funny. <laughs> Giant golden rod. No, a golden cross. Oh, I mean, what? Just a, or or a jewel and a jewel encrusted golden calf that always goes over well with the Catholics. Yeah, I think he would get so mad his face would get red. <laughs> his face would melt like the guy in in Indiana Jones one. Anyway, it would uh, become no, the exact same gets... color as his hair. <laughs> Oh yeah. Now I feel like we should bling out Father David in just like Why? Rap, in just like rapper jewelry. Oh so totally. No. Like Christian rapper jewelry. Oh totally. Too... Like. Oh, oh no! Stop! You're giving me flashbacks of that fucking Christian rap. Everyone, go out and buy Father Dougal some bling. No, no yeah. don't. Hey, Please, hey, no. Hey, no, Coops. What? No. Which one? <laughs> Jesus no. Christ is my, and I dare not, I dare not finish. <laughs> <laughs> I was assuming it was that one. <laughs> yeah. But it would still break it down. Look, it, it would still it would still be appropriate. It would say like Jesus Christ is my N word, like actually written out as N word. <laughs> oh, fine. It's all child appropriate. You can still no. hear a sermon with it. It's 
Jesus is my homie. <laughs> I think that's actually real. I'm not even. Uh. Uh, no, it's been on. It's it's been on shirts. Yeah, it is. Well, buddy Christ, you know. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna buy a anyway. nice gift, well thought out gift. And that's basically it, unless someone wants to give me shit about it in the shop. Oh, nope, nope. Nobody gives you shit about anything. They just they're just happy to make a sale. Good, good for them. Uh, with all of your loot in hand, you return to the manor. Ooh, I found so many. <laughs> Please don't oh, hurt me. I found, I found so many. Just, just, just let it go. Leave it, leave it. Drop most it, of them Jackie, are drop it. Most of them are surprisingly affordable. <laughs> going to... What? Drop it, Zappy. It's going to drop foyer. It. Just, just put it, put it on the ground, Zappy. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Oh. I went to go look up. I went to go look up Christian rapper jewelry. Sir, no. put, no. sir, put Drop the bling, it. put the bling on the ground, sir. Drop <laughs> it. The bling on Bad the ground. I've got a terrible feeling. Drop the Somebody hold me. Drop the bling on the ground or we will open fire, sir. <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> right. I I feel so bad about I feel so bad about that hound. <laughs> you should. You should. You should. It's terrible. Shame on you. It is terrible. Shame. Uh, I wish a pox upon your house. There we go. We'll move a bit. I'm, I'm An coming. Entire pox. Okay. I'm coming in last. Yes. I'm coming in last because I was on my own. Can't have a pox when you don't own a house. <laughs> Also, if you wish a pox on someone's house, but they live in an apartment, does the entire apartment complex get the pox? No, because no. house is just an old English way of saying household, meaning family. Yeah. Of course, they will probably infect everything else in the house, but, you know, that's not on you. That's on them. Absolutely. You're fine. Probably no. the demons have modernized their languages. Their language. This no, time. they won't. They're very big on All tradition. return to the mansion. Yeah. Like I said, I'm I'm coming in like five or ten minutes after everyone else. Yep. <laughs> I'm carrying so many books. <laughs> did you get a? Did you not get like a a tote bag or something? Oh, Rufus would absolutely have given you a tote bag. Like <laughs> old bag from Aldi. <laughs> Put the books in there. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, in this small That's town, probably. To say. <laughs> hey, in this small town, in this small of a sorry. town, uh, probably. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. An old bag from Neto. There. No. Sainsbury's. It's not. Neto is in the UK, I think. I know. Uh, old... It would probably be Aldi. Honestly, it would probably be Aldi. I mean, we can compromise it. We can compromise and say little. I know that little is in the UK. But it's also a German brand. It is, but it's also oh. in the UK. I'm sorry. What the fuck are we arguing about? Oh, did, we're just talking. Yeah, we're just talking the names of discounters. Yeah. <laughs> what? Like, like very cheap supermarkets. I don't know, fucking Tesco or some shit. Sort of like that. Yeah. Yes. Every little helps, Connor. Anyway. Like that, I know that's fucking. That's a British, fucking place wow it is Tesco and Sainsbury's anyway so like the, uh, the footy discount places yeah anyway anyway <laughs> you'll return That's alienating all the US people <laughs> okay you all return to the mansion the place feels just as big and ominous and slightly drafty as usual. By now, you're pretty much immune mm. to that, though. I mean, you've slept in it a few days. It's fine. It's fine. We're the sensitized. It's, fine. it's, fine. Fire. it's fine. We're desensitized. Yep. Everything is fine. This is fine. This is fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You stand it's fine. in the middle of a room with a tall man right behind you. This is fine. Okay. 
I am fine. okay it's with fine. the events that are currently happening. Yep. It is just fine. Yeah. Never fine. Nothing is ever fine. It's fine. We jump on inside. We've got uh, Father David has a bag of cat food in one arm and <laughs> <laughs> and the other the other is holding on to some of the bags of uh, camera gear. <laughs> All yeah, right. Soda's probably carrying about half of it. All right, uh, Miss Green, where would you like these? And he holds up the bag of camera stuff. Oh, um, uh, yeah, just bring, help me bring it up to my room. I'll sort through it later. Sounds Hi. like a plan, dear. Do you need any help with anything? Uh, if you feel like grabbing a bag. All right, I'll, I'll help grab a couple bags. Uh, Patty has like three duffel bags. And, uh, despite like how even she's keeping her voice, it is like a fucking marvel that she is a even still standing. Absolutely. That <laughs> shit is heavy. Yeah, I'll take one. Look, she has a very Thank low you. center of gravity. It's fine. Uh, she is not she's not a large lady and obviously uh, does not do a lot of like weightlifting. <laughs> unlike uh, unlike Father David, who's used to carrying all of the sins of all of his parish. That's why he's so yeah. buff. Oh, 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 oh. like parish. There's a <laughs> look. Father, look. Father David is actually just ripped under. Is actually just ripped underneath the priest. Oh, power. absolutely. We have Father established David. that. Yes. Yes. Have. I heard established that Father David is also oh, yeah. a, is also a professional wrestler. I heard Father David has an eight pack. <laughs> I heard Father David is shredded. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he is actually. I think he has the highest strength stat of the whole party. Actually, I think it's Jonah, isn't it? No, no, no. Uh, uh, I think twelve. I think it might have been Raymond who has the highest. But every time we've done a strength check, you always won. David's yeah, gotten better than Raymond. Yeah, yeah, Ray has Ray is a thirteen. Obviously. Ray is a thirteen Obviously. somehow. Jesus. But obviously, it's Patty who has the highest strength. <laughs> yeah, totally. See, what is his fucking strength? How tall is Patty? I forget how yeah, tall Oh my god, Patty's like five fucking feet tall. She has a fucking strength of six and like a size of eight. Oh my eight. god. Oh my god, I'm like a full, almost foot taller than you. Yeah, Patty's <laughs> very small. Uh, Father David's got a strength of ten, but he just keeps rolling. Oh, oh, well, okay then. Yeah, Patty's yeah. only good physical. Wow. I'm sorry. Oh, similar to how I have twelve, but I keep rolling like. <laughs> Did you have twelve? Yeah. You weigh like thirty pounds wet. <laughs> what, what is it for? What is it for rolling strength? Do you just multiply it by five? I guess multiply it by five to get a percentile, and you roll against that. Oh, okay. I'm just curious. Hold on. I think actually Carol made us roll like times three or just raw. I think it was very uh, it's it was very mean. Like really hard and raw. If she wants, if she wants to fucking hate you, she was very I mean to us. The impossible. Yeah, she was very impossible to us when it comes to strength. I am always yeah. impossible. Absolutely, <laughs> powerhouse Doctor Celeste. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fucking jacked okay so um after like five minutes raymond will enter too uh, with his gift wrap box of well you can't tell what's in it i'll take two i'll take two of the duffel bags from patty thank you this historian doesn't skip like day. <laughs> this historian uh, goes to the, gym the on bags, the regular you realize that the bags are like the size of patty that's fine. You don't have to see to carry. That the doesn't mean they're very large bags, mind you. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> off. Doctor Slash we... just hefting them with ease. We, we're just strolling up the fucking stairs, taking Patty's uh, crazy camera junk to her room. Yeah. As yeah. you do. You do. No, no, no. Um, I don't remember the stuff I wanted to buy. Did I say I wanted delivered? Uh, I don't remember either. 
I, I I bought some. I vaguely remember I bought some lamps, like flood lamps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I, because yeah. all the ex, because the, uh, the land, the landowner got mad. Yeah, exactly. He an electrician in here. Exactly, yeah. but Raymond doesn't oh. fucking care, so you know. Uh, by the way, uh, Raymond, um, I don't remember whose camera stuff is what. We'll sort it out after dinner. Does that sound good? Oh yeah, sure, sure. Red. <laughs> and with one bag, Patty begins the uh, monumental Sisyphean level task before of going up the fucking stairs. Maybe we'll take the other sets of stairs. <laughs> I'll tell me. Miss Green, do you need any assistance or are you set? I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I climb as a hobby. I'm really good at it. Yeah, yeah. These she are not large stairs. Fine. You you'd climb stairs as a hobby? And he's like nearly bent over double, like fucking free climbing on the fucking steps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Did you just get this Six. really concerned look of Dray. Dray, David? <laughs> she is like, she has gone from like walking to like gremlin climbing mode. She's fine. Just, just, look from Father David. Just, I'm, shift, <laughs> I'm shifting into Coop's mode. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Rude, but also acceptable. Activating Coop's mode. I think Patty has like a really high climb. Yeah, Patty's really good at climbing. Yeah. Um, yeah, she climbed up that giant clock. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a goddamn squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Patty has like a coops level. Yeah, Patty has like a coops level of like fucking gremlins wall stickiness. Coops level threat. <laughs> 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 terrible. I think coops has a little bit higher climb though. I do. I used to. I used to free rock climb uh, in my gym classes. Uh, Raymond will. Um, uh... Go upstairs to Father David's room. I think that was here. Was it here? No. It was. No? Father David's room is in the, in the attic. Yeah, Father David's room is way up in the attic. Uh, where's the uh, where uh, are the stairs to the attic? Um. All right. Oh, those are the ones you're going towards. Oh, so I, yeah, I was right then. Fine. Yeah. As Celeste yeah. like fucking <laughs> leg switches her way into the room. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Effortlessly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had the fucking mental image of Celeste, like <laughs> fucking dial, like dial-up sound blaring in the background, <laughs> and Celeste just like fucking teleporting like three, <laughs> like three feet at a time forward. Nice. <laughs> extra lag. Just extra lag. God, <laughs> possibly the most terrifying thing that we have seen yet. I'm the demon. <laughs> all right, even no we're all gonna take to... sanity damage, even though Chicken isn't using those rules. Why is that bad? Well, to be fair, I've never been here, and I've never been here when creepy shit has been going on. Fuck you. <laughs> That's a lie. You were there with the priest. I was there with the priest, but that was the only thing. That is true. I, I as a player have never at least I as a player have never been here when creepy shit's been going on. Is so we just need to start more creepy shit. Who's fucking playing dial-up sounds? <laughs> Me. God <laughs> damn you. <laughs> oh god, this is terrible. It's accurate, but god damn you. <laughs> I think I missed the dial-up. <laughs> oh god, how terrible this is. And <laughs> I grew up with it. Man. Oh, uh, by the way, Celeste. Uh, yeah. How, how are you feeling? I'm I... doing fine. I'm doing okay. Just making sure you didn't. You got shook up pretty bad last night. <laughs> what happened last? I I, I I genuinely don't remember what happened last night. Uh, <laughs> we had spooky shit happen, and then you slept, and then uh, you slept in my room. It feels like it was like five weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. It does. I could have sworn that was like. I could have sworn we had like 
at least a couple episodes after that. <laughs> nope. We all but, good. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing okay. Is it weird that I'm excited more? Yes. That I am scared? I mean, I'm scared, yes, but I'm also excited. How do you, like, just... <laughs> horks the bag onto the ground? Uh, kind of like, does not like stand back up, but just kind of like falls forward and lies on her back, completely exhausted. Um, when Celeste asks her question, she has like a pensive look on her face, just kind of shrugs. Mm. I don't know. I've never actually run into like a whole lot of ghosts. This is kind of like a first time for me too. It's not the first time. I had an experience, I had a paranormal experience back as a child during a funeral for someone who I honestly can't even remember who the funeral was for. My parents made me go to it. And I saw a lady in white and she, I just kind of followed and she, she wandered into a tomb and just kind of disappeared. And, she wasn't in the tomb when I went into it. And I know I saw her. I don't know. Uh-huh. And people keep... People always tell me I'm <coughs> believing in the paranormal. Celeste? Yes? I, I haven't known you for super long, but I like to think that we're, like, at least really friendly acquaintances. I mean, you, like, slept in my bed and stuff. Um, <laughs> so, like, and I know we've run into a bunch of really weird stuff in this mansion. I'm not sure yeah. what it is either. Straight up. I've spent, like, my entire life, like, well... Not my entire life. I, like, believed super hard in, like, all of this stuff. My parents were, like, uh, full, like, hardcore, like, uh, Wiccans. Um, and I got into the whole, like, looking at, go looking for ghosts and stuff business. Uh, I even got on a TV show. TV show sucked. Uh, and then went freelance, and I didn't find anything in that really broke things down for me in my head. Um, a, bit of, a bit of a reality check. Yeah, mostly because... <coughs> uh, I never found anything, no matter how much I looked, until, like, this building. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here or what to believe yet. And I don't want to make any mm. assumptions. But also... It Please don't be offended when I say that, like, you seeing a ghost when you're eight years old sounds kind of unlikely. Listen, I've been told that almost my entire life. At this point, I'm just used to it. And I've... That's kind of why I got into doing history. It's kind of why I got into the history business. Into becoming a history professor. There are old places like this all around the world that have weird and frankly freaky mysterious shit going on and I just want to find out what it is and maybe it proves the paranormal maybe it doesn't but it's like a little bit of an adventure maybe I just don't know if paranormal is the right word for what's going on here we don't know what's going on but it seems to be a little too fast to say like oh goes. <laughs> Let's break out the EKGs and start trying to talk to the ghosts from, like, this dead Victorian woman who probably, I don't know, died of tuberculosis or childbirth. I mean, probably. Who knows? Uh, if I remember correctly, I believe she was... I believe she died of sickness? Lady Calpare? Oh. Let me check my notes. <laughs> I mean, there's, like, a 50-50 shot. <laughs> notes, notes. Where are my notes? 
Uh, uh, no, I have it in my notes that she was possibly poisoned. Oh, fair. It's I her, mean, her death was just kind of sudden and mysterious. When was when did she die? Sometime in 18... Sometime in uh, 1833. From from the looks of it. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, to be fair, a lot of people died mysteriously for all kinds of reasons. Back then, because... Well, none yeah. of the sounds is weird. The rumor, supposedly, is that... <coughs> is that Lord James Felfair was the one that poisoned her? For whatever reason. But I no one knows... That. No one knows why, and obviously nothing's confirmed because it's way too late. <laughs> or because it's w it... nothing was really being recorded at that time period. Well, I mean, why would somebody write down why a lady died? Who gives a shit about that? Yeah. By the way, could you help me up? I can't feel my legs. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll help her up. <sighs> Thanks. I'll just put you over in the chair. Just fucking pick Patty up. <laughs> One-handed. One <laughs> 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 hey. Hey. It's legit. It happens to me more often than you'd think. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm up in the air. Here, we'll I'm find out. <laughs> I'm flying, Jack. Uh, I'm flying. Uh, that's enough. <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure how to feel about this right now. Oh, okay. th that's a no. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> oh my Fair. gosh. He dropped her right on her face. Bump. Oh my gosh. Are you oh, okay? Or are you uh, okay? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna say the door opens uh, <laughs> Father David, he after. Do you think Father David would have heard like the fucking commotion going on? Yeah, absolutely. He is Patty's, commotion. Patty's not even like a hundred pounds, so like there's a uh, possibility he didn't hear him hear her fall. I think I heard uh, a feather fall to the ground. No, it wouldn't. Like the the sound Patty made after hitting the ground. My superhuman Christian. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Superhuman Catholic hearing. Superhuman <laughs> Catholic hearing. Yeah, a, no, it's like heart. it's, it's like look, it's like a spy, it's like a spidey sense only for sin. The Lord notifies me. There the is lesbianism going on. Just walks into the room, just sees Patty like face first on the floor, like hair all splayed out. Oh heavens! He puts down the bag, <laughs> and it just goes over to help her. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, hi, Father David. I lost Miss my Patty, grip. What happened? What, what um, lost your grip? Celeste's I... body slammed me. Mm -hmm. Celeste? I did not. <laughs> I tried to pick Patty up off the ground, and I lost my grip on her. Why did you try to pick up Miss Green? <laughs> he asked me to help her up off the floor. <laughs> Dude, help me stand. Now pick me up. <laughs> Jonah will have also heard the commotion going on. Does Patty have a broken nose? That's what I'm concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> um, roll weight. Weight? Yeah, like how how much does Patty weigh? Like ninety five pounds. Um, rule of God, she doesn't have a broken nose. <laughs> Maybe a little bloody, but I'm alright. Just a little bit, just a little bit bruised. He takes out his handkerchief and he hands it to Patty. There you go, dear. Oh, uh, thanks. Um. Why were you picking her up? He just looks at, looks at LeBlanc. <laughs> so the exhausted. bags are heavy. Right. And then I put them down, and then I didn't stand back up straight. I just kind of laid on the ground for a bit, because I was tired. And then Celeste and I talked for a little while. It was actually a surprisingly long conversation, because you guys are right behind us. 
Uh, where did you go? Anyways. <laughs> um, oh, that's not for you to you to know, but Miss Green, not yet. <laughs> that's more mysterious, and now I'm concerned. I won't think to about it. Skip right over that innuendo. Um. I mean, especially with Jonah being right next to you, that's very concerning. Oh no, we were letting you finish up your plot points. It's only polite. There's no reason to be mean to Father David of all people and make Catholic jokes at him. That's a little mean. Besides, Jonah's I'm a little sorry. too old for that. That's fair. Anyways. Oh, so <laughs> who are we making fun? Or so who are we making fun of with Catholic jokes? Who do you think? Okay, so we're gonna move yeah, on. Good point. Oh no. <laughs> um, oh, Father David. <laughs> Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Then I asked her to help me stand back up, and then she picked me up. And then, like, while I was, like, reevaluating, uh, like, reevaluating my choice of attraction, she dropped me on the floor, and then I stopped reevaluating. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, uh, yeah, and you there, keep that there we are. Jeff, as long as you'd like. Uh, here are your bags screen. Is there oh, anything else you might need help with? Um, I don't think so. Very well, then. Hmm? What time of the day is it? It is just afternoon. Well, I think Miguel could use some help making lunch. Well, then. I was headed to the kitchen anyways. And he pats the chonky bag of cat food with yeah. a bright grin. And I have some research to do. I will be in the sunroom if anybody needs me. Very well, dear. And I will pick up my tote bag full of books. B books. You book off. You book off to the kitchen. Get back <laughs> in the kitchen, David. Get back Slap. in the kitchen, David. <laughs> Did I tell you you could leave? No, you didn't. No, I'm, you have to no, stay I'm here. Very worried. Or remember, I you're worried. here forever. Always worried. So Celeste said she was going to the sunroom. I am the plant room. Ah, I call, the it, I call it the sun. <laughs> I call it the sunroom, but can yeah. I go soak up some rays, bruh? It's a wonderful place to study. As Dr. Celeste LeBlanc enters the Winter Garden, she is she's struck with the wonderful fragrant scent of the flowers. It's never overpowering. It's always just it always just gives a wonderfully perfumed tinge to the air in there. It seems fresh yet sweet. There's of course also the considerable amount of warmth in there. But seeing as you're in rural England, it's never going to be too warm. It is, in short, the perfect place. Just a to just sit and sun yourself. Yeah, a balmy fifteen degrees Celsius. Shut up. <laughs> Over with an overhang sky. Overhang sky. <laughs> just the right amount of sun. Mm. As Doctor Celeste LeBlanc sits down, she as she even. Notices for uh, for a moment as she looks around, she notices that the air seems to shimmer slightly with the quiet beating of butterfly wings. It really is lovely. And I'm gonna pick up uh, probably the general history of Felfair Manor. I think that was one of the ones, right? Uh, let's see. You got a. Uh, general history I... of the nobility in the area. You didn't actually get anything specifically oh, about sorry. their manor. No one's really no. done much research on it as a standard. No, you're, so... you're, you're right. You're right. Uh, I'll take that book, and I will come over here to the pond and just kind of sit on the edge of it and just start reading. Terrible place to sit and read. T TBH. <laughs> 
Because you know something's going to reach out of the water and grab you. Nah, it's you fine. Do what you want. It's fine. I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's so fine. It's wonderful. It's so fine. I mean, what? Would you rather me take it into the shower with me? Yes. <laughs> well, Get you... it all wet and re return the book all soggy. What? You'll get uh, you'll get a shower and a show. Put it in a plastic. Put it in a plastic baggie. Singing voice. Look, get an ebook. Put your phone in a plastic baggie. There you go. Oh, anyway. reading in the bath. Reading in the bath. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's how you do it. Hmm. Anyway, so that's stuff to Celeste LeBlanc. What are the rest of you doing? Father David is in the kitchen with Patty Green, and they're cooking up a storm. They're making lunch for everybody. <laughs> We're making soup. Oh, soup. We are making what? such good fucking soup. <laughs> also, <laughs> Patty has discovered the uh, wine rack and has already opened the bottle. It's been like at least... <laughs> Five days since she's had a drink. <laughs> Miguel enters the kitchen soon after and is stunned to see both of you uh, in the kitchen making food. He stands there and watches for a moment. And he almost looks a little bit proud. Yeah, we managed to get here before you for once. Ah, hello there, Miguel. How are you doing today? Uh, Como estas? <laughs> <laughs> he actually smiles and gives a small, bemused laugh. Is the good. I want to roll. I succeed uh, my Spanish roll. Uh, oh wow! I uh, look behind, seeing Miguel come in, and in Spanish say, "Ha! Made it here for you for once." What? Miguel looks at you. Actually, does look impressed. Gives a small, small sort of fatherly nodding uh, motion, and in Spanish. Uh, says something. I would like you to roll your Spanish check and see if you can understand it. Can I roll Spanish check too? I pass! Go. Nice! Uh, 1d100, yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck yeah! Oh. Both of you pass! Oh. <laughs> Here we go! Hell yeah! Good, Remember to good. map off those, uh, those skills in your sheets. I will. Good. Mm. Yeah, it looks at both mm. of you. Mm. Nice. He says, very impressive. Oh, Father David gets the dumbest, happiest look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is probably the most he's interacted <clears throat> with you verbally since you got here. Is he there starts, like, is there? Mm? He Sorry. starts, um, he starts taking care of the dishes that you, uh, that you are, uh, that you're not using anymore, just keeping the kitchen space clean. So that you can So like it. the moment he starts picking up a dish, Addy like walks over and snatches the dish out of his hand and like puts a glass of wine in. <laughs> no it's pretty hard, Miguel. Sit He gives you a little bit of a, a little bit of a hard expression. Sort of are you contesting me? See? Sighs, looks down at the wine, sniffs it, goes over and sits down. And I can okay. let the two of you do the thing. Miguel uh, doesn't save us all in the end. Dang. Patty high fives Father David. This nice. will all be for naught. <laughs> ah, finally! Those duolingual. Uh, no, that's trademarked. <laughs> the trade lingo, the trade lingo was paying off. I'm, 
Trilingual. Um. How about Malfia? Owl Mafia. <laughs> Nausia. You know, let's go with that. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like high school Spanish with Mrs. Janice actually paid off. Mm. I, I don't. Miguel can't really help but uh, look over the, uh, at the two of you. A small smile. Small, slightly. A small smile that looks like, oh my god, maybe he has an emotion. <laughs> Well, that's clearly a lie. You're making Miguel uh, have an emotion. How dare you? And you know the... F you goddamn know the first bowl is going straight to Miguel. Like, a f like Patty is handling some of the soup stuff. Father David uh, cuts one of the fucking, like, baguette things into, like, uh, in half and then into sections and, like, bakes it with some nice cheese from the market. Oh, fuck, yeah. Uh, Patty, he makes, Patty keeps a very close eye on Miguel to make sure he doesn't get up, even like refill his wine. Patty will refill it for him. And, like when he starts trying to get up, Patty like immediately is staring him in the eye with a knife in hand. <laughs> <laughs> he gives out a slightly exasperated "Por favor, Senorita Patty." Say it. Refill his wine glass. Gracias. Sorry. Ah, Miguel, I guess we're both just a bit hypersensitive to how much uh, you've been running around. He raises an eyebrow. Yeah, it's not like we pay you. You don't have to cook for us. I pay him. He, he sighs, takes a sip of his wine, doesn't say anything. Patty, like, grabs another pot, starts grating some uh, cinnamon and cloves into it, pours some mulled wine in, sets soon, that off on a burner. Soon enough, a downright heavenly scent starts wafting through the kitchen. Even Miguel seems to, uh, seems to be uh, whisked away to a place of olfactory bliss. As it mulled wine is basically the best thing ever. Hell yeah. I've never had oh, one yeah. before. Oh my god, bitch. Oh, you need to try some. It's so good. It's, mm -hmm. it's and good, as someone good. who doesn't Especially normally like, like, like wine, <laughs> it, it's so good. Um, and imagine that was like, like the best time because it's starting to get cold again. Yeah. Mm. So imagine like tea, right? <laughs> With all like the aroma and wonderful fragrance of tea. But mm -hmm. also the drink tastes like how it smells. <laughs> oh fuck yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now you and now you know. Now you know the glory of mold wine. <laughs> I try to I try to make it every Christmas. I should buy some. It's the season again, I think. It is. It is the yeah, season. Just make yeah. your own. Nah, just make your own. Why would I make my own if I can just buy it for almost nothing? In Denmark it has raisins in it. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that Yeah, I, I see how that would work. Yeah, raisins and also little bits of almond. Like basically, it's a it's a drink that you also eat. <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. That's bougie. <clears throat> it is. <clears throat> and even I, who do not like wine or alcohol at all, even I have a soft spot for mulled wine. It's good. It makes you warm. It just makes you warm and yeah. Christmas happy. You can cook it up and put it like in a thermos and then you have it all day. It's great. Yeah. And no one could tell you otherwise when you take it to work. <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't take it to work, but oh, whatever. Fuck okay. it. Take, take it to work. Take it to work. Okay. Yeah. You can always say I, it's none of I am a peruser of alcohol, so I really got to try that this, uh, you this winter. If you guys have any particularly nice recipes, do feel free to send. Oh, yeah, sure. I do have some recipes, but they are the Danish version, so it's probably going to be a little bit strange to everybody else. I'm not adding raisins. Uh, <laughs> I live in Wisconsin, sin. which means there's like three wineries within driving distance of me that like make mulled wine. So does that mean the mulled uh, the the wine has cheese in it? No. Oh no, um, gross. I'll see if I can, no, no, I'll see no, if I can no. grab you. You add milk. 
I'll see if I can grab you the recipe that I have, Coops. But I, at make least, it, I make it every year. You. But at least one of the wineries will like give you blocks of cheese to go with your wine. Nice. It's, it's kind of magical. Um, so the yeah. magic of Wisconsin. It's just cheese. I don't, I don't have any like sandals to throw at Miguel if he tries to stand up, so I'm mostly just trying to intimidate him with a knife. No chances? Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. It... Not to sound a bit odd, but We'd love to get to know you, Miguel. You live here with us, after all. And you've been such a good help. Miguel looks at Father David with this kind of exasperated little smile and says something. Please go ahead and roll your Spanish again. Alright, roll 1d100. <laughs> Patty understands it, but Father David does not. Basically, what he says is, uh, well, it is my job. Father David looks a bit sad. And for a bit, you'd almost think that it's because he does understand, but... <laughs> and he's... <laughs> That he's just like kind of gets this thinking expression as he tries to think of what he's saying, but kind of falls a bit flat in his in his head noggin. Well, oh. Miguel, I have a new chore for you. Uh, I hand him a mug of mulled wine. Drink that. Miguel gives you a look that basically just screams, "Oh come on! You sure about this?" <coughs> Don't make me get a sandal. La <laughs> <laughs> jungle. He smiles again and he drinks it. He gives the official nodding and like hand bobbing of this is delicious. Oh yeah. Patty, Patty smiles seeing Miguel relax for the first time since they fucking moved here. Yep. And it does also warm up Father David's heart. Ever since that first impression of Miguel when they first met, because uh, Raymond decided to hop into Father David's cab as well. Yep. <laughs> He's, there's a sense of, of sympathy and oddly familiarity about being dragged along. Uh... But the, the moment passes, and the lunch is made, and the heavenly smells melds together in the kitchen, and it isn't too awful long before a text is sent out in the group chat. Come and get lunch. It's ready. And there's like a little, like, the little uh, parenthesis and the, and the semi semicolon? Semicolon. Yes. Parenthesis. <laughs> Dot little smiley face. All right. <laughs> it's not winking. Oh, Are so then sure colon. I'm certain he. It's not winking. <laughs> I can put him in a gay little cardigan, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we go no further than that. He's a gay little cardigan. It's a gay little cardigan. Over his priest outfit to let you know he's feeling casual. Yeah. Oh, by the way, David, I'm wondering. Ooh. Um, it's so like whenever I travel a place, I like get a button for my jacket. Uh, what do you think? What kind of button should you get? Should I get for uh, the Isles? The UK, the big UK. Mm. Well, it depends on what kind of buttons are available. Do you got any in mind? Um, I mean, like, I could get, like, a little, like, uh, Union Jack button. Don't. That seems kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, uh, I forgot. I can never remember. Is, uh, McDougal from Ireland or North Ireland? Uh, shit, let me look at his thing. 
I'll see if I can steal one from the Cambridge University gift shop. Damn it, computer! He's from Adair, Ireland. It's a country in Limerick. Let's see. You mean a county? Yeah. Nope, it's an entire country. A country all its own. Ireland yeah. Revolution. <laughs> yes. How oh, they wish. I don't know if it's in Northern Ireland or not. It's in the Munster prov uh, province. Uh, uh, I think that's Northern. I'm not sure. Really not sure. In... Munster is one of the provinces. It's in South Island. Okay. Okay, Republic of. Got it. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Why? I could get one of those, or I. That seems like really stereotypical. Um, I uh, just between you and me, Miss Green, I'd avoid a Union Jack. Then he taps his red hair. <laughs> ah! I feel like there's more to that than what you're saying. Does Father David McDougal have some British hatred? Um, He's Irish Jonah will, and Catholic. Uh, of course he does. Jonah will be walking into this. Are you really asking the Irishman whether you should uh, wear the English flag? I mean, I got like a little Irish flag button right here. Oh, ain't that cute? Oh, no, he'd say quaint. He's the fucker who would say quaint. <laughs> oh, isn't that quaint? <laughs> I got like a bunch of buttons on here anyways, but... I'll see if I can steal... Uh, Maybe something King... with uh, Big Ben on it. Or something to kind of signify the countryside that you're currently living in. I wonder if there's any touristy shops around here where you could get a Felfair Manor themed button. I lived in Felfair Manor and I survived. Possibly. I lived in Felfair I survived fell for manor and all I got was this stupid button. Yeah. <laughs> I better can we get that made? He probably could. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll see if I can steal one of I'll see I'll see if I can steal one of Cambridge University's little buttons that they have in our from our gift shop next time I'm uh, over. Celeste, honey, you don't have to steal one. Your I college have money. has a gift shop? Or sorry, your university has a gift shop? Yes, it's, and it's like the un it's the university shop like for students to buy like, you know, university Merch sweaters, so scarves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do have I'll, pins. I I say steal. I say steal, but I don't actually mean I'm, I'm just going to steal. I've never heard it. that called a gift shop before. I mean, that's basically what it is. Yep. Oh yeah, I it mean, makes sense now. It's a gift I shop, but you can also confused. buy books there. Yeah. It's a gift Overly... shop, but it's mandatory. I mean, the actual students will just, like, buy books and hoodies, but, like, basically the rest of the shop is just for parents to buy, like, novelties or whatever to brag about their kid going to college. Proud Cambridge University parent. Bumper stickers for their cars. Ugh. Look, uh, come I, in, I, come and get I yourself get some lunch. I can get a discount on a button, probably, so you don't have to pay as much. Hey, Celeste? Yes? You're, you're majorly fucking something up right now. Mm -hmm. Anyways, lunch? I mean, Look I at your still, hands. I would say just steal Look it. Look at your hands. Yeah. What's not in them? Is it dinner? I mean, lunch? I'll get some lunch. There you go. Also, mold wine. <laughs> You're a darling. And I will take the mold wine. Before I, I even bother to get lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I will grab some soup. Hmm. Anybody know where Mr. Shafter is? I could have sworn he came in after us. Bienvenidos, Miguel. Bienvenidos. My Spanish is still awful. But I Thank suppose... you, Hunt. Bienvenue, Power Bottom. 
<laughs> there you go. That would be Italian? <laughs> I know. I know. Possibly offensive? I don't know. Is Miguel Mexican or Spanish? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Fuck. Is he from South America? We don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Do you have a new power bottom? He you might be Miguel's face as if he's not a top. He might just be Amer he might just be American. <laughs> we don't know. God. <laughs> Look, all Raymond knows he's he's work he worked in the family mansion and he just took him with him, you know, as a help. Well, <laughs> anyway, Raymond yeah, is David. Raymond is up in uh, Father McDougal's uh quarters. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, uh, Miguel, uh, De Donderas. What exactly is, uh, is she asking? Where are you from? Ah! <laughs> well, he just looks at Patty. Gives a little bit of a raised eyebrow. Gonna move Sips his malt spirit. wine. I'm gonna move the spirit box. <laughs> Miguel, you son of a bitch. Responds with a small smirk. America. There's two Americas! <laughs> well, th that depends. That depends where you got educated. Technically, there's technically there's three. Don't forget about South America. <laughs> or Wait, South what? America, Central America. No, South America, Central America, oh, yeah. North America. No, you're right. But some countries only have one. And they just call it the Americas. And they treat it as one. As far as um, continents are con concerned, I think it's mostly just south and north. No, it, de it depends. Yeah, depends where you live. Central America is in its own continent. It's like a, it's like a cultural real. region. Cultural yeah. region is not the right yeah. word. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a sociologist. Yeah. Whatever. Continents aren't real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Trying to say something. <laughs> trying to RP, you motherfucker. Mm. Stop talking about the Americas. <laughs> Agreed. Father David. We'll take a bowl of soup and a little, 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 little spoon? fucking baguette toast with the cheese oh. on it. I'm going to go and see if Mr. Shafter is hungry. A little bit of that tired look in his eyes again. Oh, oh dear. Tired of dealing with Raymond shit. And he will go he and he will uh, look for Raymond. He does not expect to, Raymond to be in his room, so he will check Raymond's room. <laughs> Unless they bump into each other. No, they won't. <laughs> He's busy in your in, in your room. Oh dear. He will go and check Raymond's room. And you will find that Raymond is not there. And then he will start to call out for Raymond as he kind of meanders around the around the halls with a bowl of soup. And soup. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> He's a good, good man. Here, Mr. Raymond, Shafter. Raymond, Raymond. Here, Mr. Shafter, I've got soup. Soup. Come hey. here. Patty, please. Soup, Mr. Shafter. Patty, please. That's not a place to sit. That's not a place to sit. That's a table. That's a countertop. <laughs> Mr. Shafter. I got some soup. You want this soup? is just... Father David, it's just like like looking for a cat. Like... <laughs> this is the... Mr. <laughs> Mr. Shafter, it's dinner time. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Mr. Shafter? Mr. Shafter. Mr. Shafter. Mr. Shafter would be a great cat name. Just saying. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> he's uh, so he's wandering the halls, and he's very gently calling out for her, Mr. Well, Shafter. Obviously, yep. Raymond can't hear you. Yep. He starts looking in uh, common rooms because he doesn't want to look into anybody else's room. Obviously, because that'd be rude. It would be so rude. Yeah, and you're a oh. lot of things, but you're not rude. 
checks around. He doesn't find Raymond Shafter anywhere on, on that floor. So he starts to go up, thinking that Mr. Raymond might be in either the peacock room or the common room upstairs. A peacock room? And that's room. probably when uh, Raymond hears Father David. Oh, dear. Mr. Shafter? Uh, where exactly are you? Uh, he will be coming up the stairs. Also, give, give me just... Give me a second, I'll be right back. No. Okay. Alright. I'm okay with this. It means I get oh. time. I get the time to find all the tokens. Tokens? Oh, I absolutely forgot about the water guns that I ordered. You did all the oh, that's For right. Holy water. <laughs> Nightmare. Uh, holy water, water guns. So hey, cool. it's the best use of a water gun. To defend against the unknown. You're not wrong. <laughs> God, I remember playing fucking riffs and going vampire hunting. Where you get, like, fucking ceramic, uh ceramic water guns with like pressurized motors in them yeah because in riffs uh running water would uh hurt and even kill vampires this included rain or squirt guns yeah vampires were kind of bitches they yep. both were and were not fucking horrible it was fucking weird, because, like, you could have a fucking vampire in Rifts, like, licking the side of a, of a nuclear warhead as it went off and be perfectly fine. But it was a fucking kid with, like, a squirt gun. A fucking super soaker could smoke a vampire. It was weird. That is weird. Running water. Ch -ch -ch. Ah! Oh, Jonah opened a secret... Oh, was that the secret door that opened up into that weird mushroom room? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was reading the notes again. I'm the one again. who uh, accidentally stumbled into that. Got it. As uh, spirited teens often do in horror media. Indeed. Okay, back. Sorry about that. Hello, and welcome back. Uh, so, Father David is there. Okay. D did you, like, yell anything out? Yeah, he called out your name. Mr. Right. Shafter? Uh, he was like, in here! He'll pause. And he'll look. <clears throat> Mr. Shafter? I did write them down. Yes! He'll open up the door and he'll peek inside. It's your own room! Just come in! <laughs> he doesn't... He would like to think that you wouldn't enter his room without his knowledge. <laughs> like I have, to, <laughs> like I have this sort of compulsion. Please. Anyway, um, Raymond is has just finished setting up the record player and like finding an outlet for it. I just realized. Oh yes, a record player could not. Possibly backfire in a horror game. <laughs> no, oh, no that's not at all. That's the worst that could not, happen. Not at all. <laughs> Mr. Shafter? Ah! Father David, I, uh. I felt quite, uh. Felt quite bad about the way we left things. And I, uh. Decided to buy you, uh, a token of. You know, my, my general appreciation of you being here and helping all of us. So, uh, he goes to the side and reveals the, you know, quite nice record player. Anyway, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm afraid I'm not that, uh, versed with, uh, old technology, but I think I got it running. Let's see. It's gonna put a record down and, let's see, right? I actually have it lined up here. That seems to work. Yeah. 
just looking at it with like soup in his hand. <laughs> This is... <laughs> well, thank you very kindly for the gift, Mr. Shafter. Just gonna turn the volume down. Uh, I also bought a a number of other uh, classic records. I didn't really know what you like, so I just took things with a like you know Christian overtones, I suppose. He just oh. reveal, just reveals a row of vinyls from the sixties to the early two thousands, all with I suppose weirdly Christian messages. <laughs> like there's walk, walking in Memphis is in there, for instance. I, he comes over and he looks at it. Thank, thank you kindly, Mr. Shafter. You, you really didn't have to. Oh, no, I did have to. I just... Well... I know I'm, I'm a bit... I can be a bit abrasive at times, but uh, I hope it's... I hope you don't think it's anything personal. I'm just a bit... frustrated with... The way things work out in this uh, mansion here. Frustrated? Well, you know, the fact that no one seems to take the fact seriously that uh, our landlord doesn't know there's a literal maze underneath us or that we're not allowed to put lamps in there or redecorate. Very, um. Uh, it's very quizzical. You're right, that is a bit concerning. Uh, he pauses and he looks at his hands. Uh, 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 soup. Ah. <laughs> <did> that <laughs> ah, suits! Oh, well, suits, you. is that soup? Oh, God, soups, is that soup? <laughs> soups, is that oh, soup? Yes. Takes the soup and eats it. Mm, oh, yeah, wonderful. soup. <laughs> mm, soup! And he gives him the cheesy bread with it. <laughs> cheesy bread, yeah. Uh, yes. Very good soup. With good cheesy bread. Yeah, the Raymond will like like dunk the bread in the soup and then eat it like as as civilized as he can, although that's quite difficult with soup. With soup and bread. Exactly. Bread soup. Indeed. <clears throat> he will try I bread soup. He tries it, he he tries his best not to eat it like a peasant, but there's really no other way to eat it. It's true. Uh, thank you very mm. kindly again for the record player. I, I really don't know what to say. No, don't, no, 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 don't, don't mention it. No, 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 no. Oh, this is a great and cheese. Starts looking through the the records, Loki hoping for a Beatles record. <laughs> Beatles are in there too. They're not really Christian. Yeah. They're not exactly Christian related, but you know, classics. Exactly. But probably well, one of like their worst he ones, though. <laughs> I mean, you would have known the you would have known that Father David liked the Beatles. Yeah, exactly. That was the whole point. That that's why I got the record player in the first place. So no, the the Beatles are in there, but everything else is it's kind of Christian related because you know. Oh, I, he like he lifts up the album. Oh, the Beatles. Oh, it's been hot. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. And, like he hugs the album against his chest for a moment before he. Um, Raymond will hold it off. Raymond holds. Yeah, Raymond holds the soup above, like Father David's head. So it doesn't go into way. No, he doesn't hug Ray. Oh, okay. Me. Well, <laughs> fine. I don't deserve a hug. I get it. I will just eat the soup then. No, he doesn't want to invade your personal space. Just... He's not sure if he'd be okay with it or not. <laughs> I'll just eat the soup. Guess I don't deserve personal contact. Nom, 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 nom. He, he, he'll give you a Christian side hug. Fine. <laughs> Christian, <laughs> Christian side hug. Christian side hug. Yeah. Just, God, just bless me at this point. <laughs> God. You're right. A father That's what David the side hug is, is for. Equivalent of a blessing. Yes. That's what the side yeah. hug is for. Oh, bless you, Raymond. Uh, no, he. Oh, bless your heart, Raymond. That's very nice. And Raymond will burst into flames. <laughs> Raymond was I the demon all along. 
Just Father, he bursts into flames. Father David whips out his crucifix. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I fucking knew it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. <laughs> Raymond will will like nibble on his cheese bread, quite quite content actually. And go, oh, don't, again, don't don't mention it, Father. Just uh, enjoy it and uh, take it in the spirit it's meant to. I will leave you alone now. Mm. Goes away with the. Well, I'm going back downstairs to enjoy lunch. Oh. He grabs the fucking Beatles album really quick and then he goes and joins but, Raymond. But why? The record player's in there. He wants to show it to the others because he's <laughs> jazz. God damn exactly. it. Ugh, fine. Listen, he's jazz. Look, he's Raymond. Jazzed about Beatles records. Raymond will walk slowly and eat his soup. He doesn't feel like hurrying. <laughs> soup isn't a hurrying meal. Exactly. It's I almost forgot. I by the way, have, by while the way. all that was going on, I made a dash upstairs to the bedroom, to my bedroom, and then came back down with a box. A box uh, of soup? Patty. No. Patty, <laughs> I almost forgot. What? I have gifts for everyone. What? And I'll give them out once Father David and Raymond are here. <laughs> this better be good. Oh, no. Is this slowly becoming wholesome? Oop. No. You damn oh, well know it. Yeah. We have to... Uh, Coops, uh, Coops let's stop you that. Guys. <laughs> I remembered you guys. Uh, you did fix up the old spirit box. It, it just needed batteries. <laughs> yeah. Ah, kind of. Oh, yeah, and that's one of the things we got in town. Coops, let's disrupt the wholesomeness with the beetles and soup. <laughs> oh, you already did get uh, batteries into the old spirit box. It's fine. That's all good. I'm kind anyway. of I'm amazed that batteries fit into that thing. How old is it? It's not that old. I mean, it. I mean, yeah. It. It wouldn't. It. It can't have. It can't be that old if double A's fit into it, really. Well, not really. No, double A's, A's, but there was some batteries lying around the mansion that fit into it. Hmm. I mean, it was kind of homemade, so I'm sure there's like some weird way to uh, configure it. And, yep. Yeah, fair enough. You only need just two like two contacts. That's fair. Exactly. Anyway, anyway Raymond will. Be, Raymond. That... Sorry. Here you go. Okay. Oh, I was gonna say. Now that everyone is here, I can give out what I ordered. Remember when we talked about having holy water guns before? God, sort of. I do remember you mentioning that. Said the yes, only priest in the room. It. Yes, oh, I've been thinking about it ever my... since. God. <laughs> Celeste, did you actually? I will pull out a sawed-off shotgun model water gun and hand it to Patty. I don't oh think. Oh my god. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think that will work. Miguel, Miguel will have a magnum model. He looks at it in absolute uh, confusion. Uh, Jonah gets just a cla like the classic like super soaker model and a so and like a soakable water bat. Oh yeah! <laughs> surely, surely the super soaker model would be the most efficient. Yeah, probably. Oh heavens! I'm Father going to David, be having a blessed Father, bathtub. Father David will get. Father David will get two twin pistols. <laughs> a la Boondock Saints. Oh he looks at it. He gets a very confused, but kind of um, amused look, like Remember? somebody. Sorry, go ahead. Like a like a Sunday school kid trying to offer him a garden hose. <laughs> the last will pull out what looks like a long what's a long range model for hitting targets at longer range. I don't think that will work with water pistols. Uh, and she'll hand Raymond a tiny dollar store water pistol. Oh, come on. You know, <laughs> Raymond will look at it, not take it. Just go. Come to think of it, I could Perfect. just order a pressure washer. I will, I'll. Pressure washer. 
It's fine. It was mostly for the joke, Raymond. And I'll pull out another, like, classic model super soaker for Raymond. I'm still tempted to just buy a pressure. <laughs> you guys are gonna have me working day and night. Well, Raymond will, uh... I mean, it... Yeah, we're gonna have to store a bunch. <laughs> Raymond will accept the super soaker with, uh, like, two fingers. Like, he's holding up I don't know, some sort of rodent he found. Like a lady would hold up a piece of garbage. Oh no. <laughs> well, um, thank you if worse, very much if for this. Worse comes to, if worse comes to worse, we can load these with holy water and we should at least have effective weapons against the ghost. Uh, please do yes, make that. sure you come to me before we have any incidents on our hands. <laughs> what a... I'll be more than happy to bless a load of water for our uh, water guns. Yes, that's the word. <laughs> well, Raymond clearly thinks this is a nonsensical a solution to a made-up problem, but he won't say it out loud because he's nice right now. Ooh. Celeste. Yes. You're you you uh, mm, Celeste, you're a beautiful, beautiful human being. <laughs> Just admiring her sawed off shot. <laughs> Super I do try my best. <laughs> Just somewhere between like <laughs> the best day of my life. Somewhere between thinking this is fucking ridiculous and this is fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best day of my I life. I think I think I'll still just get the pressure washer. Fill it with holy, <laughs> it with holy water. Oh my god! And once again, how could I not give the priest? How could I not give the priest two twin water pest, two twin water guns? <sighs> what? I gave I gave Father David two twin water pistols. No, that was an in character. What? <laughs> no, uh, it's how could I not give Father David the the twin water pistols? I, no, Celeste, I heard you. What do you mean? Has no one watched Boondock Saints? I have. I don't watch... Oh. Are there saints in the Boondocks? Yeah, Are there I new canonical saints? Oh my god. What movie is this? Oh, Boondock it's... Saints. Oh, it's a classic... Uh, it's a classic American uh, vigilante thriller from 1999. It's uh, quite entertaining. Um, oh, I Raymond don't watch just, a lot of action movies. Raymond just pipes in. Oh, I watched it in college. It was a part of a movie night, and he just he just puts the super soaker on a counter somewhere out of sight. I uh, I, I don't need to worry about my daily testosterone intake. I'm so sorry. It's fine. This is amusing. I like watching oh. action movies from time to time. Well, that's very fair. I'm not much of a movie nut myself, but but uh, Patty Patty Jonah. Dr. Yeah. Blanc. Yes. Look. And he like holds up the album and he's so yes. <laughs> Ooh, a Beatles album. Cool. Uh, uh, which album? <laughs> What's the worst Beatles album? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Do you, like the be no. Do you like the Beatles, Miguel? Honestly, it's probably uh, it's, our... it's probably like Abbey Road or something. It's one, of, the it's one of the more well-known ones because those yeah. are the ones that uh, know the most of. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Maybe I. I think it's more like Abbey Road Let's or Let. Abbey Road or Let It Be. Yellow, one of the big ones. Yellow. Su yellow yeah. submarine. It would not be Yellow Submarine. I was quite the rocker in my day. Just <laughs> David as a teen. Oh we God. all live in the Yellow Submarine. <laughs> 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 that was quite the rocker in my day. The Beatles, ABBA. Like the plaid pants with like a zippers. Hey, <laughs> don't knock ABBA. Of course not. They're back, you know. They're back, you know. They have a new album on. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, there's uh, ABBA if you go look on the internet for it. Yep. Which is just the Halloween version no. of mummy, ABBA mummy, songs. Mummy, mummy. <laughs> must be funny. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> we all ought to sit down and listen to some of the albums at some point. 
Wouldn't that oh, be yeah, nice? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, I take you like a lot of the Beatles? It was one of the harder bands I listened to when I was a teen, not to brag. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. The last is that's, just giggling. That's, that's oh, so, so sweet. Oh, so is Jonah. That's is. so what? sweet. Oh, oh my. Celeste is, Celeste is trying not to giggle. <laughs> is trying so hard not to giggle and just, like, trying to uh, eat the soup. You... <laughs> Oh, you have no idea time. how hard it was to sneak that album into me house when I was uh, young and. Okay, fair. <laughs> uh, what kind? Of... Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> what kind of music do you like, Celeste? A little bit of everything. It's, it mostly depends on how I feel on the day. Just Doctor LeBlanc listening to Screamo on her way to work. <laughs> ah! Yes. I mean, uh, I think listen. we can all guess what Jonah likes then. Yeah. Indie. Indie bands. Uh, Beyonce. Uh, I'm blanking Ooh. on. I'm blanking on pop singers. There's <laughs> also Lady Gaga. Katy Don't Perry. forget her. She is a very popular uh pop singer. <laughs> Just takes a sip of mold wine. Oh, no. no. In case you needed to know what sexuality it was. Yeah. In case. Just, just in case. Maybe a little Kanye mix in there. Is that right, Jonah? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A little, all Nick, I a little Nicki to. Minaj. A little Nicki Minaj every now and then. What, do you, uh, what kind of music do you listen to, Miguel? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I saw that. Miguel just looks over, uh, looks over at Father David Shrugs. Me, uh, me gusta Abba. Okay. <gasps> I cl- lights up again. Clearly. Abba. Wait, clearly Miguel would be a big fan of the Gypsy Kings. Clearly. What? Oh. They perform in Spanish? Isn't, They're great. Isn't, if it wasn't for the nights, just such a bop. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny gives Father David just this incredulous little little look, and he's trying. And this man is trying so hard to keep his chuckling to himself, to keep it on the <laughs> inside. He's rolling so much will, and he succeeds. rolls his will. Roll his will, chicken. He I rolls his will, and he fucking succeeds. <laughs> and he just he just nods. Listen, see. listen, unpopular opinion. I liked the 2008 Mamma Mia. Meryl Streep really. Beyond Meryl Streep's ability to try and sing. Yeah, I thought it was good. <laughs> okay. And again, Miguel gives a little, a little look, a little look that <laughs> says so much. It says that he, he really wants to, to talk about this. He wants to join into the conversation, but he just keeps himself. Back. Oh, Doctor LeBlanc, how dare you? Meryl Streep was an angel on screen, and she played Donna so well. You could almost believe she was the hard-working young lady working on that island, fixing up a hotel. <laughs> Raising her daughter by herself despite the three possible fathers. Oh. <laughs> instead, of, instead of an overpaid actor, <laughs> Master Prime, you know. But yeah, good movie. Really, the no. second one got Meryl's... me in tears. I was crying so hard listen. I had to leave the theater. <laughs> no, listen, Meryl Streep is a fantastic actor. She's not so great at singing, though. <laughs> ah, at least we can have different opinions hear, on things. Yeah, you know, I heard. I heard lots of people left that theater crying when she heard when they heard her singing. <laughs> oh, no. oh, and they had Cher in the second one playing as Donna's mother. Oh, she does got a very smooth voice. I'll give her that. Very sparkly outfit too. Smooth mm. as sandpaper. Your costume wasn't bad either. Yeah. Wow, Father I'm David starting to learn I'm really behind on the, I'm starting to learn that I'm really behind on the movie curve. Holy shit. 
<laughs> oh, it's just Mamma Mia. It's a very good musical. I highly recommend it. Oh, so good. It really so pulls good. you into a bout of almost summery fun. Set in, I think it was these islands off the coast of, I think it was Croatia and Greece. I just need Father David to do movie reviews now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Raymond, you, you didn't answer. What kind of music do you like? Did you ask me? Yeah. You're the only one who didn't answer. Well, I didn't either, but I'm asking you. Well, I don't really listen to... I'm <laughs> sorry, why would I put that to the accent? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't really listen to popular music anymore. Really, Starlight Express ruined pop music for me. What Express ruined the pop music? For? Starlight Express ruined pop music for me. Oh, Starlight Express! Isn't that the one with the? Uh... Yes, it was the trains, and it has a lot of Christian allegories in it. <laughs> Yet it was quite. Something as he eats his soup. I really, didn't, I really didn't expect to see train Jesus allegories, but they sure did do it, didn't they? Raymond just sure Raymond just silently bites off a piece of his cheese bread, chews it without saying anything. I mean, at least they were fantastic on those roller skates, and the outfits were nothing to scoff at either. With a very, <laughs> very, very, knowledge in musicals. very stoic expression on his face, just eating his cheese bread. <laughs> Bit of a thousand yard <laughs> stare there. <laughs> My All God. Right. <laughs> All right, Patty. What kind of music do you like? What? Oh, what kind of music um, do you like? I used to like, uh, like a smattering of stuff, but. Then, like, uh, Left Hand Path came out, and that got me into, like, metal and stuff. Then I started listening to bands like TMI, uh, Nada. What's uh, TMI stand for? TMI. Mm, hold on. I was playing some music. Buddy pulls out her phone, like, spends a few seconds looking up music. Uh, and then, like, hardcore Swedish death metal starts blasting out. <laughs> Jumps. He jumps. Yeah. He jumps spot. I love this. I love this. It's a romantic ballad about eternal love. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> He's got a bit of a bewildered look. <laughs> yeah, I think one. I I think my current favorite man right now is Dismember. Probably no. Uh... There would probably know a fair bit about metal, but I, as a person, do not. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, fucking Jonas saw this coming from the moment Patty opened her mouth about Absolutely. Left Hand Pass. But it is oh, all, like, yeah. uh, it's all, like, hardcore Swedish death metal. Well, yeah. Oh, that, re that reminds me. Actually uh, when you uh, were saying that you were pulling up music on your... So I just immediately turn in, uh, to watch uh, Father McDougal's response. So I know he's going to be pulling some great uh, or he's just going to have some great facial expressions from that. That actually reminds it's me that okay. <laughs> apparently uh, what was it called? Metalocalypse will get a, a movie finale finally. Finally? Nice. Wow. With a time. Yeah. Uh, Father David does jump about five inches in the air and settles into this kind of bewildered look. His eyebrows just maintain this like perfect level of rays, and his eyes just a little <laughs> wide as he, as he listens. Patty's like bobbing her head like a thir like a thirteen year old girl listening to Beyonce. <laughs> as long I've as never you don't heard anything like this. As long as you don't scream. And no one was surprised. <laughs> Please, somebody show him ghost. Somebody, please, God, show him ghost. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, my God. Patty hasn't but... done that because Father David seems like a very nice Catholic man, and that might give him a heart attack. He's a very nice man who believes in the goodness of God being all around you. And in, in the littlest things, from random kindness on the street to a, to a sunrise. 
And also <laughs> believes that ABBA and the Beatles are hardcore music. Nice. No, Although it's not just now. the Beatles. Yeah, those are, uh, those are the spicy music. <laughs> ABBA is all right. It's a little bit lewd in places. Like there was that song, Two for the Price of One, in which the man was very clearly lusting for two women that he thought would be occurring, but it was really just a girl uh, putting out an ad and mentioning that her mother would also be a part of the package and that she would have a mother-in-law. Oh and he explains god. this to you. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I start putting on like Gojira and stuff. <laughs> Anyways. There was a, there was a boy, uh, Miss Green, there was a boy in my parish uh, back in Adair and sweet lad as he was, he did mention metal a few times, and there was something about a power wolf, and I think <laughs> it was, uh, I think power it was, uh, uh, it wasn't spirit, it wasn't phantom. Oh, mm. no. Huh? Ghost? Ghost, yes. <laughs> uh, it's a little on the nose, considering where we are right now, but uh, I put on power wolf. Christ, uh, Christ in combat. <laughs> Oh, this is nice. <laughs> it's a bit rowdy, but it's nice. <laughs> it's a bit rowdy, but it's nice. I can, I can, I can, I can feel the power. I can feel the power of Christ coming through it to me. Yes. <laughs> oh, please put a monstrous clock for him. Oh, they're very passionate, aren't they? Yes. Very bad. Goodness. <laughs> yes. It's clearly about the ever-loving love of God and His love. Miss anyway. Green, are they of the faith? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, Father God. David. Hey, Father David's my favorite fucking character. Uh, I actually don't know. I don't listen to a whole lot of Power Wolf. Um, it's not that I don't like them. They're really good. I just normally have other stuff on my playlist. They're too soft for That's me. fair. <laughs> yeah, they're really more mellow. Um, oh, I love this. I love getting to know everybody else's music preferences. It opens up so many doors. Meanwhile, um, I'm just... in a bit of a symphonic metal phase right now, so a little bit of Ampatasia, a little bit of Blind Guardian. Just... Oh, that sounds so nice. Just to see uh, McDougal's reaction, Patty does not actually like the band, but she puts on Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> what uh, does Cannibal Corpse sound like? Uh, uh, Cannibal Corpse the... is like the most fucking stereotypical. <laughs> it's just like it. Band. It sounds just like the fucking band name, really. Right. Give me a give me a second. I'm gonna yeah, click on the it first. It sounds exactly like you expect. Yeah, you know, right. it sounds like it's cut. Its album art looks like. Hang on, I'm going to listen to the first bit of evisceration play because it's the first one that came up. <laughs> meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, Raymond is just putting another, like another bowl of soup, in his, in his uh, on his plate, while humming uh, "Defying Gravity." Like, if you really want to get a feel for how Cannibal Corpse sounds, just look at some of its fucking album art, and it, it's not much better. Uh, 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 <clears throat> just Priest of Sodom playing. <laughs> <laughs> the first comment is my grandma used to sing this to me every night before bed. Uh, before bed. I love you, Grand Grams. <laughs> <laughs> Miss <laughs> Miss Green, I'm yeah. very sorry. What? I've got no idea what they're saying. Oh, it's it's not a good band. I just wanted to see how you react. Here's some other uh, here's some other album art, by the way. Oh, it's, oh yeah, I'm sure you would love their album art. <laughs> oh, oh my, oh, I mean... oh, oh heavens, are they angry? This looks like angry music. <laughs> oh, they're incredibly angry. Here, here's, a, here's a link, by the way, Coops. I don't know if you went looking. My... Oh, okay. Um, what, what, is uh, Miguel's, what is Miguel's reaction to all this? Miguel is just... Honestly, Miguel is sitting there listening to the music and he looks like he heard worse. <laughs> He just yeah, like probably has he's even bopping along to some of the ghosts. All right, he um, he looks and he see like he sees the wretched spawn 
album cover and it's got like a whole like weird demon baby coming out of a puss. Demon baby. <laughs> and he just like he just it's instinct, instinct, hand slaps over his own eyes. Oh heavens. <laughs> oh heavens. <laughs> <laughs> his oh, face yeah. is very red you can see it behind his hand oh, dear. <laughs> oh miss green that's uh mm. yeah it's that's not a little great. bit graphic it's <laughs> don't you think that's the second like, slowly peeks to see if the phone is still there that's the second most that evil patty baby i've ever like seen switch... <laughs> <laughs> patty is like switched back to like uh ghost this time oh yeah it's 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 pretty trashy don't worry which which song which ghost song is she playing? Uh, series? Ooh, that or series. Square Hammer. Meanwhile, I would like all of you to roll a listen check. Oh, <laughs> funk yeah. Funk yeah, I'm good at. Did you say funk yeah? Yeah. Funk hey, yeah. I make it. I make it really well. <laughs> He's just trying to look for anything else to take his mind off of what he just saw. <laughs> 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 Just you and I defying gravity. No, I do not. Oof. I'm deaf. No, I don't make it. <laughs> Father David is the only one who hears the tiny little sound emanating from Dr. Celeste LeBlanc. <sighs> Hello! I'm in a kitchen! It's in a haunted mansion! Dr. LeBlanc, your phone's ringing, dear. Miss Green, Miss Green, could you please uh, pause your music for just a moment? Oh, we can jam oh, out fine. later. Oh, it's fine. I'm gonna go outside and take this. And I'll put my soup down as I leave. <laughs> I should go outside, uh, out, of, uh, out of the kitchen at least, and pick up your phone. You hear the... Uh, you hear the voice of Quincy Rufus. Who I also met her mother, so here oh, Mr. Rufus. I want to see him. Oh, look at him! Um, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> Dr. Uh, Dr. LeBlanc, I... Uh, I was calling you because of, uh, well, two things. First of all, um, I shall have uh, Alistair's, uh, Mr. Prowley's, um, I shall have his major works on the occult, uh, the library in about three days time and secondly i found something that i think you might be a little interested in it's it's something concerning uh, the manor you see our, uh, our conversation got me thinking and i remembered reading something about uh the general uh, clergy around this area. It turns out one of them took up residence in the house uh, quite soon after the original uh, Mr. and Mrs. Felfair um, this, uh, died. Hmm. Evidently it was a man by the name of uh, Joseph Prescott. And oh. as far as I can tell uh, the records are quite old and a little bit vague on the entire thing, but he seemed to have been using the mansion as uh, uh, as an asylum for the homeless and um, those of ill fate. And by mm. asylum, I don't mean mental institution. I mean he literally gave them uh, a roof and food. Although it seems like something must have gone on because he was found hanged in the chapel. Oh! Really rather I... grisly uh, story. I can only piece together so much of it, but I thought it might be of interest to you. Absol absolutely! Hmm. You said Father Joseph Prescott? Yes, exactly. <laughs> The records I have of him are from, uh, 1860. You know how long he had the mansion for? How, or how long he owned it for? It unfortunately doesn't say, although uh, the records themselves are from 18, uh, 1860. However, it uh, dates his 
death as uh, 1857. You said 1887? 1857. Wait. He had ownership of the house in 1860, but died in 1857. No, no, no. the records are from 18, uh, 1860. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, don't, don't worry. I know that was a little confusing. Sometimes... And he had, he had ownership of it directly after directly after Lord and Lady Falfair. He's the only one who's really... Um, who's really stated as owning the mansion uh, after them, yes. Okay. As far as I can tell from the records, the mansion wasn't um, empty for uh, more than a few years, maybe only one. And you said he was found hanged in the chapel. Indeed. Actually, explain some things. Oh. Careful about the crazy talk. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard some rumors about the house, and one of the rumors is that you can hear his ghost in the chapel. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. There are quite a few rumors about that place. I'm not really sure about the legitimacy of any of them. I don't really go near it that often. Because it spooks me, and I'm a little librarian. <laughs> oh, don't call me out like I'm that. I'm not allowed to leave the spot. <laughs> I've been I'm bound just an here. NPC. Yeah. I'm just an NPC. I live in this library. Somebody please rewrite my AI. When you stop think, or uh, when you aren't talking to me, I cease to exist. Please, we must continue this conversation. Please, I got I got your phone number so that I can uh, so that so that I can continuously live. But now I live in a void. It's the house as a makeshift sanctuary, and I can't spell the word sanctuary today. That's okay. There we go. Got it. This house is a sanctuary. <laughs> All right, and that should take care of. Okay, so he gained ownership sometime after Lord and Lady Felfair. Used the house as a makeshift sanctuary for the homeless and ill fortune to, and then he was hanged in 1857. Exactly. Okay, perfect. I have it in the notes. Wonderful. Uh, that way, it actually we know it actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> no, this is excellent news. This is well, I guess it's not excellent news, but it's certainly. Excellent as far as the research goes. I'm very, very happy to have been able to help. I'll keep you posted if I find anything more. And also if I have an available time in my schedule for that coffee. Oh, yes, please. Keep it, please, keep it in mind. I do owe you. <laughs> Alright, I'll talk to you later. Alright, bye. Wonderful, see ya. And... I'm assuming that as I turn around, I'll hang up, and as I turn around, do I see the doll? You probably do! It's just sitting there. Ah. Uh, menacingly. I've seen where that <laughs> doll was, right? Oh, yeah. You've seen it up quite in, a few times. Up in the actually. attic? Yeah. Up in the attic? You also know that um, Father David like took it and swaddled it and put it in the, uh, in the crib at, uh, at one point. And then it also just appeared in his wardrobe. He probably dragged it accidentally down with him with the Beatles album. Uh, Clearly. Clearly. Uh, probably. Uh, excuse me, Patty. 
I I can see the I can see the rings. I know. Yeah, it's you. unfortunately. <laughs> Anyways, I will take the doll with me. Door can't can't move through door. The, the doll. Thomas, stop it. No. Damn it. You think if you change your color, I won't know it's you? I don't know. Just long enough to get you to freak the fuck out. I mean, I was concerned a little bit when it started moving. <laughs> that was uh, Father David. So, um, I just want to oh. say, like, Celeste, or Celeste, like, walks in. Patty has, like, grabbed a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, is, like, blasting more. Uh, <laughs> let's go with the crown. Um, and she's, like showing Father David a picture of like a mosh pit and a wall of death and an audience. While um, slightly mortified. Well, let me guess, while drinking straight out of a wine bottle behind you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Patty like shows her like shows him a picture of her and like full on fucking uh, death metal cut or death metal get up like <laughs> fucking uh, mohawk that's been like dyed black at the oh. tips. Oh. Uh, it's like a picture of her after a moss pet. She's got like blood all over her face. And oh, shit. you look like a little hedgehog. Not a bit hurt. Look right there, dear. <laughs> you look not a bit hurt, of course. That's around the time the blanc cam comes in. <laughs> By the way, a wall of death is literally where you have like the audience split into two halves and then just fucking charge at each other and slam into one another. Yeah. Awesome. Metal's weird. I can it's only nice. imagine Patty in like a getup that makes makes her look like a hedgehog. <laughs> She's so small. <laughs> just me. covered in spikes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Especially for the wall of death. <laughs> you got like the full on fucking kiss makeup going on. Like white face, the black corpse fucking paint? corpse paint, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh Father David, this was upstairs Ooh, yes. in your room. This yeah, was you upstairs, know. right? And I'll ch I'll hand him the well of doll. Oh, heavens. Uh, uh why well, yes. And he reaches out his hands for her. Uh for well, the doll. Uh, I found it at the bottom of the steps. <laughs> what do you mean? It was the at doll. the bottom of the. It, I went out to the. I went out to the front foyer to take the phone. Take the phone call, and I found the doll at the bottom of the steps. Well, I didn't take it down. And I'm assuming <laughs> Raymond didn't take it down either. Oh no, Raymond's Raymond's hands were full with uh, a little bit of cheesy bread and a little bit of soup, and I had my hands full with the uh, with the Beatles album. Well, and we were all yeah. in here. We it was on top of me. me. It was on top of my dresser, uh, right next to the new record play. I almost I heard that on top of me dresser. <laughs> on top like of me dresser, pirate. yeah. <laughs> it off. was on top of me dresser, yeah. <laughs> on top of me dresser. Uh, it, it was a. It was on top of me treasure. On, on top of me treasure. Father David me, secretly you rowdy a, lot. Father David secretly a pirate. No. <laughs> uh, on, it was on top of my dresser. In fact, it was uh, kind of behind. It, well, I'm assuming it was God also swaddled. Moving now. Uh, he, he's got a very concerned face. moving on their own now? <laughs> he, he looks at Jonah. He looks like a kicked dog. Oh. Uh, you'd be at that, but it looks like you'd be correct on that one, lad. I also found, I was also given... Oh, no, this isn't good. Yeah, also I was, on another different note, slightly in the same vein, I was, I, uh, Quincy Rufus from the uh, Ceiling to McLamp uh, Public Library <laughs> actually got me a little bit more information about the house. So, as it turns out, Father Prescott actually gained <coughs> official ownership of the house after Lady and Lord and Lady Felfair. He used oh. it as a he used it as a makeshift a makeshift. Uh, Make sure to asylum for the for 
for the homeless and ill fortune before he was hanged in 18 before he was found hanged in the chapel in 1857 goodness that's about oh. all the information i have right now i'm mm. currently waiting on some of alistair prowley's works to come in to to come in so that i can take a look at those later But Father David looks. <laughs> Father David holding this doll. Stop moving the doll. He's holding it very gently. The doll wiggles violently. Who's, who's moving the, the doll, doll around? He's holding the doll very gently. Looks around at everybody else. I see. He's got, once again got a little, little pale. We go out. To Behind the house, a good uh, hundred feet away, at least, and bury it. <laughs> well, now, Jonah, when has that ever worked? Don't out? be ridiculous, Jonah. We have to burn it first. <laughs> good he holds point. the doll a little closer. Do <laughs> well, it just took a jot. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't... What? He holds up the doll. He looks at the doll. Have none of you seen a horror movie before? Oh well, no, I've seen plenty of horror movies. I'm just wondering what we're going to do about it. Well, my good friend back in... Me, my good friend, uh, Willie, in Catholic school, did watch quite a bit of horror movies, and he let me know all the kinds of things that were going on. I don't remember a whole lot of them, but... Uh, isn't it not, doesn't it not work when you try to, uh, bury a thing? Doesn't, isn't that historically a not working thing? I mean, when did Besides, it, Besides, when did it ever not... anything nasty, have ya? And he, like, looks at the doll. When did burying the evil thing ever not work in a movie? The doll completely fails to respond dramatically. I mean, we could we could lock it up in one of the cabinets, I guess. Uh, can I can I roll for a vibe check? Are you vibe checking? Are you vibe checking the doll or everyone else? The doll. He's, roll he's, for a vibe check. He holds the doll up. He looks at it very intently for a hot moment. Okay. Ah, damn. Let me just, yeah. Yeah. Can I, you know, question. Remind me, remind me the description on the doll. It is old. It seemed to have features once, but they have long since been loved off. It is, in a word, well loved. Oh, so it's no, completely blank doll. Horrible. Almost completely blank. Oh, it does have one button eye, the other one fell out ages ago. It makes You're us... not sure what color that button used to be but now it's brown that makes it so much worse <laughs> yeah oh, well. yeah this we, we we need to burn this thing <laughs> also just oh, come now <laughs> oh. does it have stitching in the back it has stitching everywhere come now it is it's just a doll yeah it's not like Chucky's i don't trust maybe it they got made um be, i have a question like wait wait i have I a question Move down the stairs. I have, I have a question. A place that it couldn't have gotten normally to without What's walking your question, down there. Mr. Shafter? Sorry, go ahead, Shafter. Do you think the doll could hold a knife? I don't want to figure it out. Look at the doll. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Listen. The poor little, the poor little thing was in the nursery when I found it. And... Well, when we went back, after we found all the lenses and things, there was a wee tyke in the room. Maybe it's hers. Or his. What in the hell? Uh, I don't remember this. Me neither. Was I there for that? Was I there for that? Or no? You were there for that, but uh, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't remember 
It uh, seemed like a lot of you didn't really hear the little giggling from inside the nursery. Oh, was that when me and Jonah almost beamed someone in the head? Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. I don't. <laughs> I do. I do as well now. Now I remember. That was the night you found those massive handprints all over the nursery. Well, not all over the, uh, the nursery, but all over the little nightlight in the nursery. Right. <laughs> Patty. Patty? <laughs> uh, he starts Patty? to follow Patty. Patty has had enough Patty? of this shit. <laughs> Patty, are you okay? <laughs> Don't leave the yeah, doll behind. I'm just gonna go get a button and some thread. What the fuck? Don't leave the doll behind. <laughs> oh no, he's taking the doll with him. He's holding the doll very gently. That's still here. This is the only way he holds the doll. Yeah. Mm. Just, just put it back wherever it is he found it. We're not dealing with this today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Patty comes back down, sees everybody still standing around the stairs. Ugh. Um, I didn't know we were rolling up the red carpet for a button and some thread. <laughs> oh, no, what? I was just, just kind of left without saying anything. So we well, were talking about stuff. <laughs> I was gonna come back with like a big dramatic entrance and be like, What's up, fuckers? Woo! Well, well, oh. You ruined it. <laughs> Thank you very kindly, Miss Green. I'm sure it'll appreciate it. To be, to be honest, I thought you were going for a lighter. <laughs> oh, don't lighter? be so mean. We could have just we could have just used the oven. I mean, I suppose. <laughs> But I thought we wanted to set it on fire, not bake it. I mean, no! <laughs> Oven gets fairly hot, you know? Yeah, but not hot enough to, like, it spon make things spontaneously combust. Oh, watch me. Yeah, you, you can totally cremate uh, something in an oven. Totally. Totally. Hey, <laughs> It'll uh, work. Here is a question. <laughs> Patty, do you yeah. know how to sew? I do. Perfect. Do you have any applicable skills that you might roll, or is it just a knowledge? I know how to sew stuff. Mm. You know how to sew stuff. Fair enough. <laughs> With a jacket I mean, like that, a... you gotta. Yeah, that's a good yeah I, I was gonna say, like, I have some old-ass clothing, including this jacket. I know how to put a button back on. Nice. I mean, who doesn't? Okay, Raymond probably doesn't, but... <laughs> you know. Raymond... Buys a new wardrobe every time one button falls out. <laughs> well, no, he gives it to Miguel. Miguel can sew. That's true. Actually, no, he heads to Miguel and says, Miguel, go buy me a new jacket. This button fell off. Yeah. <laughs> Miguel, probably, Miguel, Miguel was... probably just sews it to get sews it back. He does. He's been doing that for years. <laughs> Raymond has no idea. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably. Fair enough. Raymond would not. Anyway. Oh wow! Just like uh, the last one. Yeah, yeah. It's good to uh, have something similar. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so uh, which color is the button that Patty sews in? Brown to match the other eye. Right? Nice. But make it. Take too long for the before the doll has two eyes yet again. Make it red. Like fact that it oh look, look at that! Look at us. Well, as bright and cheery as a partridge, aren't you? I mean, here's I don't question. think Do I would go to... that far, but it does certain, or but it is certainly an improvement. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to go get something. Patty has like a little sketchbook out, and is, like, uh, and some scissors, like cutting up some scissors to like measure out like a really simple shirt and pair of pants for the doll. Aww. Father David goes upstairs and he gets a. Uh... Like a little ribbon. And he'll bring it back downstairs and he'll tie it in a little bow around its neck. <laughs> noose. In a noose formation. No, in just a little, little like, little, like, chunky bow. I see. Just chunky right in the front. Bow. Chunky. The well loved doll. There we go. Now that's dapper. Need I need I remind <laughs> you all that the that the well loved doll somehow jumped down two 
two stories. No, it's fine. When you don't have floor. any balls. It's fine. Through the floor. Now that the now that the eye is fixed, we can put it in a burlap sack, set it on fire, and then bury the remains. It's fine. No. Yes. And also, it's kind of <laughs> hard to like go downstairs normally. You don't have any depth perception. Exactly. Exactly. That <laughs> makes it worse. Surely, surely. <laughs> Going down the stairs without death perception is even easier than normally. You just woo, fall down. Is, is <laughs> no one worried about the fact that the doll has somehow wound up oh, I'm stairs? <laughs> I am incredibly worried. I think uh, we put it back where we found it, and if it moves again, then we burn it and scatter the ashes. <laughs> now, why would you... It's done nothing wrong. It's just moved. Which is a little bit but concerning. You should address it. <laughs> Shouldn't but you? Also... All the scary shit that has happened while we're in this house, uh, like a doll going for like a nice Sunday walk, is not the weirdest thing. <laughs> it's not I Sunday mean, yet. I mean, you know what I mean. We don't yes, know if I that do. doll was trying to get to a knife. I mean, <laughs> Raymond will. Raymond will get out of. Like a big fucking meat knife. Go over to the doll and see if the doll could feasibly hold it. The doll is smaller than the meat knife's handle. Yeah. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna I'm gonna point it at I don't think the doll would be any danger even if it gets like hold of a knife. Maybe a small Patty's knife, like but honestly is like Raymond's waving around a knife next to it. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Please be careful with that, Mr. Shafter. It's just a knife. Okay. It's just, it's just... <laughs> I don't trust it. <laughs> He's just making elaborate hand moves with the knife in it. It's just a knife. Don't be worried about it. <laughs> just <laughs> waving it wildly. <laughs> And uh, Patty is now sewing on uh, David's handkerchief. It's anyway. like a little uh, shirt and yeah. pants. Anyway, Raymond will put the knife back you, in the... You... Raymond will put the knife back in the drawer and say, See, it's... I don't think the doll could hurt us even if it gets, like, hold of a, a weapon. Unless it's, like, a small gun or some sort of such. <laughs> even then, I don't think it could pull the trigger. It doesn't have any fingers. Did Patty at least uh, clean the blood off of the fucking handkerchief? <laughs> what blood? Uh, ah. Well, uh, Raymond, can I can I see the tiny water pistol for just a moment? <laughs> the, the tiny one I got you as a joke. I'm just waiting. What? What? Can I can I see the tiny water pistol that I gave you as a joke? Oh, I didn't even take that. I just put it down on the counter. Oh, I'll go over to the counter, pick that up. So I'm just... Kind of fill it with water. <laughs> fill it with water a little bit. Uh, Bob David, can you bless this water pistol for me? I'm just waiting. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna... I'm just waiting for the next night when a doll throws up with a fucking Derringer or something. Father David just crosses his arms and looks at her for a moment. Is that really necessary? I'd rather be safe than sorry when a doll moves down the stairs of its own accord. Would you rather, you know, have me bless the water inside of your own personal water gun? That way I, you're not stuck with this one. I, I, I can't mean, I have. Playing along with this. <laughs> I mean, listen, listen, I was just gonna squirt it like once, and if it. if nothing happens. Well, <laughs> in it quite on. Sorry, you in it. Yeah, he goes. Uh. -huh. uh so Don't I guess I'm not getting the water in my water pistol blast. Good luck, man. Should follow because he is interested and also kind of concerned. 
Uh, Father, thou art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Father David goes. Uh, let's see. Doctor Celeste will. Doctor Celeste will basically will do the the priest thing with the crucifix, the the Catholic the Catholic motion. The Catholic motion. Yes, the Catholic. <laughs> just, motion. A, just little Catholic, Catholic little Catholic wiggle. Ooh, ooh. It's like the Cupid <laughs> shuffle, but more. Crisp. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Father David will go upstairs and he will look in the drawer where he remembers putting the nightlight that he covered in a cross and sprinkled holy water on. <laughs> it's still there. Can I vibe check it? Go ahead and vibe check it. Vibe check. <laughs> Just... The rest of us really need to get on this vibe check? check. Exactly, yeah. Just... What, what was it? What was that? For a cult and then again for a vibe check? <laughs> I mean, what exactly is your vibe check? Uh, it's basically just the feeling I get. Like, um, I'd say it's kind of just like spot hidden. Fair enough. Just use power. Joy. God, I mean, I would, yeah, yeah. You can just use power for it. Just, sir. Power for it? Check my vibes. So basically, just use luck for it. Uh, we can use power for vibe checks? Alright. <laughs> I, I make that one. You make that one. Okay. You vibe check it. It seems secure. Protected. Alright. So wait, we, wait, we can vibe check things? You can vibe check things Are now. there any chances it also no. contained? So... Can I, can I, vibe I will check? roll on a cult... Just for funsies. Clearly. Vibe check. It's nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's wait. The blank wants it's, to ask. It's the funny internet can number. I, thank you. Please. Can I vibe check the doll? Go ahead. Wait, you what don't have the vibe. What? What do I need to roll for vibe check? It's just your luck. But you don't have the power oh, of luck? Christ. I don't. I have the power of being Catholic. <laughs> The power of Christ gives Father David a plus 20% on his vibe check. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll also go ahead and vibe check the doll. Uh, so do I need... Well, no, I, will vibe checks. I will not. I will not. No. So what do I need to roll? What do I need to roll for a vibe check? <laughs> luck, apparently. 100, and it needs to be lower than your luck set. <laughs> lower than the luck? Uh, than your luck. luck is effectively power times five, so... Oh, okay. It's probably what oh. checking yep. actually means. But it's Never gonna be mind. the same as your luck. Exactly. Nope. No! I had such a high luck! <laughs> yeah, it's an impressive amount of luck, I gotta say. <laughs> Actually. Right, so it's that's terrible Jill luck. And Dr. Celeste, um, Patty, do you wanna <laughs> I make it. Too? Uh, Patty is not checking the vibes of the doll. He's She's currently giving it a nice little suit. Nice. <laughs> I'm just making. Right, so, uh, I'm making a general vibe check of my environment. Jonah, who isn't there, um, can't uh, apparently just just. Oh I mean, yeah. Jonah's not there, so can't really vibe check at all. <laughs> Doctor Celeste LeBlanc, um, vibe checks the doll. Uh, let's see. Okay, so a vibe check works in such a way that you roll the power thing, and I give you one word that describes the vibe of this thing. I mean, you failed the I failed the luck roll. So. Exactly. So I give you one word that maybe describes the thing, oh, the okay. vibe you're getting. Let me just think sure. a moment for what that word is. Boy, do I feel dumb. Horchata. <laughs> I mean, don't we all? Oh, man, tacos. Now I'm hungry for tacos. That's Horchata isn't taco stuff. I know what horchata is. I was just, you said horchata, and now I'm thinking of tacos. Fair. Nice brain web you got there. And honestly, that's exactly the word you get. You get tacos. The vibe is <laughs> tacos. Not for the doll, but for you in general, you just feel like tacos. You're hungry. <laughs> what do I get? Patty, I'm getting a vibe of... Patty, I'm getting a vibe of tacos from the doll. <laughs> what the fuck? Are you sure that's not just... I think I may just be hungry. Again. I'm gonna go 
Look at more soup. <laughs> They're gonna get some food. Raymond's um, vibe check. Uh, <laughs> the general environment was it? <laughs> yeah, because fuck the doll. The doll is clearly evil. I don't need to vibe check for that. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> fucking, it's clearly fucking haunted. <laughs> The vibes are confused. <laughs> Basically, it hurt itself in its confusion. Oh. And I think uh, I want more. To be able to... I think I want more soup. I'm gonna get more soup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get more soup. What kind of soup? Yes. Like, uh, what kind of soup did we make? But I don't know. For that matter. It's a uh, cream of mushroom. Oh, wonderful oh, then. Good stuff. Delightful. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah, Jonah will be a second bowl of that. The vibe is ravenous. You're all hungry. <laughs> hungry. Like, hunger for flesh. Do Clearly, the doll hungers. Clearly. So, uh. The doll is making us And also <laughs> mushroom soup. <laughs> when I'm done giving it a little jacket and pants, a soup jacket, <laughs> I'll, uh, bring the doll back up to its room. Back up to You'll bump into Patty. I'll bump. Patty will bump into Patty. <laughs> so yes, so there's a double ganger in the house. Oh, oh fuck oh, it! No. I maced oh, the double Patty. Oh no! <laughs> you uh, you bump into David, who had just opened the door to go in after Jonah. Oh, Ooh, which one's the real Patty? Oh, uh, hello, Miss Green. Hey, David. I was just gonna bring the doll back up. Oh that's goodness! Now. Oh, look at you! Oh, such! Oh, you've done such a good job, Miss Green. Oh, how dapper you look now! It all makes me hungry. Well, I think you should have okay. some more soup and bread, Doctor LeBlanc. I'm just gonna well, go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have more soup. Bye. I always wonder why British people have awful teeth. Um. Jeez. That was a little bit off-handed, don't you think? No, oh, no, it's true. It's a little offhanded to say that looking at a doll makes you hungry. I mean, that was the vibe! That was the vibe. What? I was... I... Wasn't I Celeste... Think my vibe was... I think wasn't... my vibe was off. Hey, David, isn't Celeste from, like, Cambridge or some shit? Well, Could... she works at Cambridge. Right, because she sounds like a fucking 20-year-old... Or like a nineteen-year-old valley girl. <laughs> too much, no, too much American that. TV. I that I sound like a valley girl, apparently. Ooh, I'm just quite sure have what the right valley girl vibes, is. You know. A vibe. What's a vibe? It, it's an internet thing. Um, don't worry anyways. about it. Don't don't worry about it. And up they go to Father David's room. Father David also took the Beatles album. Ah. Maybe playing Beatles will calm the will calm the doll. Indeed. Who knows? You gotta get your way up to the goddamn. There you go. There you are. There we are. Anyways, I'm gonna take some more soup, some more mulled wine, and I am going to go back to reading. More research. It never ends. It never does. It never ends. War never changes, Jerry. War never changes. Except when it does. It only gets more technological. <laughs> well, the doctor said, let's go. I'm back up in the sunroom. Oh no, I'm talking to myself because, god damn it, apparently I lost you. Oh, no, I moved myself up to the sunroom. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the, the winter, the winter con. I just, I lost you on my third map. Huh, weird. Oh, oh, because I wasn't there. I think I deleted myself off of the third map because I was just weirdly standing in the stairs for no reason. <laughs> but you, you don't have to erase yourself from existence just because you don't like your environment. Exactly. Jesus. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Fuck it, I don't like I these stairs. I don't like these you stairs. Into the... <laughs> I don't like these stairs. Into the void I go. Woo. Never do you yourself, Zephy. God damn it. I'm By sorry. By the way, 
Miss Green, I'd like to thank you for not instantly be and burn or bury the doll. I understand that a lot of the times the first reaction might be fear, but... I don't know. It just seems a bit cruel. He opens oh, up the door guys. and uh, allows Patty in. Thank you. Uh, his uh, bed is made and his room is clean. Oh, there's a very old-timey record player now. I don't know. Um, I just, <laughs> I just thought it would be kind of mean because uh, I thought about like when I was a little kid, and I wouldn't really like people setting my dolls on fire, even if I was a ghost. <laughs> I take it it'd be in general. Father David looks on the uh, dresser. Is the little blanket he used to swaddle the doll still there? Yep. Oh, there it is. You almost lost your cozy. <laughs> he no. he less swaddles it and more just like gently wraps the blanket around the doll as if it would get cold and sets it in its spot. There. We're too wholesome for this. <laughs> He's that just gonna wholesome kill us enough. All. That doll you... is going to kill us all. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's not. Actually, no, no, the doll isn't going to kill us now just because of that. You have saved us. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Plus, it can't hold a Combined knife. effort between McDougal and Green. We established it can't hold a knife or a gun. We're fine. There. It might try and poison us. It just Blinks strangles it. Patty and Father David. He <laughs> takes the green lenses out of his pocket and he looks at the doll. <laughs> it has two handprints on it. Well, it has two sets of handprints on it. Uh, the prints kind of just go over it. They uh, they wrap around the doll's body. They um, uh, they are smeared around the doll's limbs, and they're very small handprints. Ah, it's just what he th what I thought. And he takes off the lenses and he hands them to Miss Green. It's just the wee one's doll. Huh. Are the handprints like adult hands or are they like tiny hands? Tiny hands. Tiny baby Daddy hands. By like measuring her hands against the handprints and then like grabs like David's hands, like holds them up to the handprints. <laughs> like, yeah, they're they're my size. They're it's kids' hands. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even like point anything at you. Two. What the fuck? Oops. You know I've got the baby hands. It was, uh, this was this was clearly a coop, coop stroke by proxy. We all know it. <laughs> coop stroke by proxy. We all know it. Come on. But we have we're we're being haunted by coops. Father David, um puts the Beatles album in the little collection. He does show the collection to Miss Green. Yeah, Raymond really went above and beyond getting me a bunch of different music, and I think, uh, well, most of them have a little bit of a Christian motif on their covers. I think he was, uh, trying. So. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's very nice of him. I, I, I was trying. That's the, that's the thing that you know, to get from this. Way, I was trying. I was trying. He put forth a very good attempt. I, I, used, so I'm... I used all two of my brain cells. I, think... I don't think he really registers that. Uh... <laughs> really, well. most of the timing only lasts for a few hours to a day. Da -da -da. Psychology roll. <laughs> Success. I think I think it's his way of apologizing. <laughs> I mean, that's what I literally told Father David. Yeah, yeah uh, he I didn't, didn't hear. say as much. <laughs> well, I mean, more like, um... Raymond's a guy with a lot of money and is pretty obviously materialistic. Um, I think, like, one of the ways he communicates with people is stuff. Like materialistic can is often used as insult or 
a way of calling somebody shallow, but I think Raymond also just like thinks in iconography of stuff. He probably felt bad that he kept like ribbing you for being Catholic. And now this is kind of like his way of apologizing and trying to show that he doesn't think that's bad. And that's very nice of him, I have to say. Yeah, it back. Sorry. I went, I, to, I went to, I clicked on, I was in Discord and I, I went to go see, like, I saw one of my other groups is like, had like a live stream thing because I, I just wanted to see what was happening. And I All accidentally right, got into the voice call by accident. All right, Zephy. Cool. Oh, my uh, story. Uh, right, yeah, it's probably it. I get you. Yeah. Fuck. Or I'm just, you know, pulling all this out of my ass. Um, who knows? I'm not a psychologist. I don't think either of us are. I just play one on TV. <sighs> Shoot. Mm. Do you think I should get him a thank you card? You think he'd <laughs> like that? <laughs> it's not much. But I, I really don't know what I could get Raymond that he wouldn't already have himself. And cards are nice. You, you put you put what you feel on the inside, and it's personal. Patty like holds up a finger, <laughs> takes out like a Beatles record, and puts it on the record player. She starts playing Beatle music, cranks up the music uh, loud enough that people might be able to hear it from the floor below. I think I think that'll be enough to say you're welcome. Mm. I do love me some Beatles. <laughs> I'm still gonna get him a card though. It's only polite. <laughs> now I get to make a card. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no! Oh, you know he's gonna draw on it. Yeah. You know he's gonna draw on it. Yeah. I, I mean, the oh, card's nice beats. and all, but I I think he'll appreciate it more. You just enjoying the thing he got you. Sort of, uh, apology accepted. You know? I hear that. What were you saying, dear? <laughs> oh, I'm just commenting on the adorable RP. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good shit. Burn Dude. the witch! <laughs> I, uh, hand David back the lenses. Thank you kindly. He takes them, he puts them on again, he looks at, uh, around his bed area. This bed area seems clean. However, something seems a little bit off. Something he hadn't noticed before. Ruh -ruh. On like his that. bed, he sees the same glowing green light of the handprints that he's so used to. However, those aren't handprints. They are much, much too small for that. Are they paw prints? He pauses. He frowns a little bit. He gets closer. He leans in. He gets closer and he leans in. And upon closer inspection, those are the unmistakable prints of little kitty coffee beanies. Ah, oh, shit. Oh. Those are paw oh. prints. Oh, Ghost cat. Freebo's back. Ghost oh. cat. Ghost Patty. cat. Patty. Yeah? He takes off the glasses he hands uh, um, to her, like, pointing in the area. Look, 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 look! Beans! <laughs> beans? Beans! Posies. Oh, beans! <laughs> oh, goodness, have I been thinking we're... F Is there another cat in here? Is it a ghost cat? <laughs> I didn't know that there could be ghost cats. But it was meant... When I, it was mentioned... It was mentioned, uh... I think by Angus... Uh, Rumors about I a also, ghost cat. Patty, I how are we going to feed a ghost it. cat? I also mentioned it to you. <laughs> I mean, yes. It clearly you would need... It was in my... You'd need ghost cat food, surely. Right. A ghost fish? I mentioned it when I list... I mentioned it when we first met and I listed off the rumors. It's true. Uh oh. Hey, I forgot that. Sorry, my dad. <laughs> I'm literally the rumor mill for this game. 
Damn it. Yes. Anyway. We'll take the glasses back when Patty's done gazing upon the ghostly beans. You know, it's a little strange. I thought for sure, for sure it was. I thought for sure I could feel the cat and hear it purring in my ear at night. Just the other night, I, it was unmistakable. It was lapping at the holy water I had on the nightstand. I didn't know that cats liked holy water? Yeah, that's... Uh, but given the, you know, the, the ghostly paws only the head. I didn't know ghost cats liked holy water. Maybe it tingles a little bit on the tongue. <laughs> like spicy food. Spicy water. How are we going to deal with a I'm... ghost cat? I'm... We find I'm not... a ghost mouse. Oh. Or we find a ghost dog. Are we find a way Ghost Let's cut an RP, damn it! I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Fuck. Damn it. Uh, ghost cat uh. related? Father David said, and I quote, What are we going to feed a ghost cat? He was talking about how the cat might like uh, the holy water because it's, you know, like it might tingle oh, on the it's tongue. Fucking spicy. I'm not sure that's how that works, but I'm also not sure that isn't how that works. I don't know, this is all like yeah. really new territory for me. It's semi trolled territory for me, but then again, I, I also don't know the dietary habits of ghosts, and much less the dietary habits of ghost cats. Ah, oh, well. Either way, he goes over and he pats the little well-loved doll. At least uh, Segator uh, is well fed. We can't really do anything for a ghost cat, I might think, but at least we can do one for a living one. I wonder if he... We should probably catch him at some point and make sure he gets his shots. <laughs> oh yes uh, don't worry while we were at the pet store I picked up some heartworm treats Ooh, that should be good. just in case you know Smart. I'm not excited to try and catch Sigator in a cage though <laughs> oh yes I think all we'd have to do is close the window while he was in Zor's having a good punch yeah but if we want to take him to a vet Mm, that it might be a bit of a problem. We might have to have a quite a few towels. There was, there was this little wild cat, uh, not not a wild cat, as in you know what? It was domesticated, sort of. But like you'd, you'd have to get a. Yes, uh, we might have to pile on some towels just to make sure our arms aren't shredded to ribbons. when we get there um we can make raymond do it <laughs> i don't think raymond has that much uh, experience with animals uh, but yeah, i sure do uh it would make a funny video yeah he does have animal care he does oh. have animal care fuck i have i've had quite a few run-ins with some uh, well less than uh well animals Less than happy campers. Yes. What that ghost voice of me said in the background. <laughs> Some less than happy campers. <laughs> Shall we head back down the stairs and hope that the wee mite up here is comfy enough in the new suit and bow? Yeah, hopefully they haven't set anything on fire down there. I really hope they have it. Oh, when you come down, everything is on fire. <laughs> you return to the kitchen. Immediately, you smell something burnt. The sound of a smoke alarm is going off. No. All for Zool. All for Zool. We were all, we were all busy eating soup. Nothing burns. <laughs> so, as they leave, um, Patty, like, takes a second and hesitates. Um, as stupid as it sounds when the whole vibe check thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
for a while at least, for most of Patty's adult life. She's mostly just focused on on her own internal monologue. Um, ever since like that wonder of the supernatural and magic and crystals and shit got crushed out of her by reality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's she's been a little distant from like her sense of intuition, <laughs> but um, she takes a second. And looks back into the room at the doll. I'm sure and just the doll. tries to like gauge a gut reaction to it. Go ahead and roll for it. Roll a vibe yeah. check. She's not calling it a vibe check, <laughs> although it's definitely a vibe check. <laughs> uh, that's a success. Aha! Uh -huh. The vibes are. Jesus, how much power do you have? A oh, lot. Patty's got like an 18 power. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Doesn't the have a lot. Are... <laughs> the vibes are peaceful. Yeah. Too peaceful? Uh, Patty, like, make sure, to clo make sure to close the door without slamming it, just very quietly. Um, follows after Father David. <gasps> Father David does um, turn down the Beatles music a little bit, so it's not so loud. Wait, how? Patty turned the music up. Y yeah, but you're like one level below now. Oh, before they left. Oh, okay. Okay. That may okay. I don't know, maybe you have a remote for the gramophone somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I spent it's enough money on it. Me. It's an it's a newer model than what I actually put in there, but that was the only No no, I get I get it. <laughs> I spent enough money on it, it might have a remote. It might. That's I assume together when you walk towards the kitchen. You know, Patty, I'm really wondering, why would it have come down the stairs? <sighs> Patty shrugs. I don't think it came down the stairs on its own. Hmm. It's a doll. Where are cameras located? It is a doll. In that case, I wonder why someone took it down the stairs. Hey, you think they want it back in the playroom? Maybe. Uh, we should bring are, it down there sometime. There are apparently two cameras located on the second floor. One inside of the old uh, master bedroom slash study, and one mm. outside in the hallway. Because mm. if it came down these steps, it would have had to have come from the second floor. Try and check the video for the second floor. Unfortunately, you won't really get much there. Oh, also, sorry, that's the third floor I'm thinking about. Oh. Do we have any camera set up on the second floor? I don't that's think so. No, that's why we bought a bunch of fucking cameras. Exactly. You yeah. don't have anything set up on the second floor just yet. We didn't get around to okay. anything. Then, never mind. I guess my question is moot. There wouldn't be any video evidence. Unfortunately, but I was good thinking. <laughs> okay. I'm back in the sunroom. I'm reading. You are reading. It is a wonderful place to read. Warm, is it balmy. It's so soothing. And you sit there amongst the, uh, amongst the, uh, the greenery. You even you sit uh, you sit still enough, and you read quietly enough that one of the butterflies flutters by, lands briefly on your book, sits there in a sunbeam and flexes its wings. Hello. And I, it's, I, weirdly, Celeste is one of is like someone who paces a little bit when she reads. 
She gets kind of restless. Ah. So, she'll probably get up and just move over to where, like, the water part is. As she gets up, the butterfly flies away. But not before hovering a little bit before her face. What color butterfly is it? It's blue. point at it with an open hand and ask, is this a bird? <laughs> yep. I will hold my hand out for the butterfly. It unfortunately flies away before you can uh, you can really entice it. As you look after it, you notice that there are quite a few more of it. <laughs> There must have been some caterpillars hatching in the in the winter garden because all of them are the same kind and they're just fluttering about. Are they like all fluttering about like near the same place? It varies a little bit. Some of them are flying about in midair, basically in the middle of the room. And some mm -hmm. of them, like a few of them, are gathering around the same spot. Uh what where is that spot? That spot is on the chair that you were just uh, that you were sitting in like earlier today. Oh. Sure, I'll go over to the chair. I'll let the butterflies lead me. <laughs> As you move over to the chair, the butterflies flutter away, scattering before the proverbial winds, seeming to disappear back into the leaves and the sunbeams all around. I'll just continue reading my book. And you continue to do so undisturbed, but for the faint sound of a breeze, and the very gentle little flutters of butterfly wings that sometimes brush by your cheeks. Where is the wind coming from? Because it should be a glass building. I'd like you to roll a spot hidden check for that. Uh, I don't like that now. Let's see. Spotted. Oh, ho, ho. you look around, you you still hear the wind, you can still feel it a little bit, it's a, it's a very light breeze. You look around and you check the, uh, the windows, all of them are completely closed and sealed. So hmm. are the, uh, the double doors, there doesn't seem to be anywhere that wind could be coming from around and you look at the uh, at the leaves and the plants and you notice that none of them are moving this wind that you're hearing that you're feeling doesn't exist it's strange but there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I'll just... I'll head upstairs real quick, just to make sure there's nothing up upstairs. Like, I'm just... I don't know if there's, like, vents or anything that, like, come from outside that... You... That come from outside the building. Or you come head... from the edge of the building. Sorry, never mind. Go ahead. Thank you. You head up the stairs and you, uh traverse the walkway bisecting the in the middle of the winter garden and you don't see any vents huh. you only see more plants and more glass and more butterflies all the same kind of butterfly all the same kind of butterfly do they all have the same pattern every single one of them the exact same pattern 
the exact same pattern. I'm trying to remember if that's an anomaly with butterflies or if that's unusual. So unusual or unusual? Yes. <laughs> How do well, you remember? Can, the... Well, you can roll for it if you want to. If you have any applicable skills. Uh, I don't have bug knowledge. In that case, you unfortunately don't <laughs> really know. I have library use and history. Well, in that case, use your library. You my my br my brain library. Your brain library. Library uses not just books; it's also stuff like the internet. I will Google. You know what? I'll use a Google lens. I'll use Google Lens and snap a picture of the butterfly. But I'll also look up if but all butterfly wings are unique ah. to individual butterflies. That is a that's, twenty-seven. That's a twenty-seven. That is one success. Very good. You what? um at Google uh recognizes the butterflies as being blue morphos. I see. They really are quite beautiful. And it seems quite normal that the uh uh sorry. It seems quite no, normal that, that the pattern on the wings tend to be as regular as they are. Okay. Uh, one other thing that I'd like to add to that. Is it... Are blue morphos... Are blue morphos usually... Are they native to this region at all? <laughs> or are they exotic? Actually, allow me to uh, read up on that real quick because I want to. I want That's... to answer truthfully for this. Well, Zephy, why don't you roll your lepidopterology skill? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Let me roll a nat. Let me have to roll a natural one for that one. <laughs> and no, that would be great. Natural one would. Yep. You know that would be awesome. That's because that's what I have to roll to succeed on that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. Exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, seeing as you uh, succeeded on the um, on the wikipedia of the Blue Morpho... That would be a no. Mm. That, would, uh, that would be a... These things are very much not native to England. These things are neotropical. They're found in Central and South America. And the, okay. the plant. What about the plants? In the are the plants also from the same general area as well, as the butterflies? There are quite a few plants in there, and I'd say roll another library uh, use to see if you can, you know, spot uh, if you can recognize it plants, because they're not really your area of expertise. I mean, neither are butterflies, so exactly. That's all five. Aha! Google saves me. Google saves me once again. Indeed, you do. Um, Google does spot uh, a few tropical plants in there that are roughly from the same area as the blue morpho. The question is whether they were brought in as sort of an exotic pet or not. Hmm. And at this point, I think Celeste is just taken to sitting on the steps of the that about half I'm sitting on like the bottom steps of the of the yes. stairway just to look while she's Googling things. As she Googles things, the butterflies coalesce around the chair once more, sitting on the back of it. On the uh, on the arms, on the seat, just five of them dispersed upon the chair, spreading their wings, soaking up the rays. I want to vibe check the butterfly. Go ahead and vibe check the butterflies. This is rapidly spiraling out of control. <laughs> <laughs> vibe checks are rapidly spiraling. 
Yep. <laughs> I'd like to use locksmith on the butterfly. <laughs> uh, I want to unlock the knowledge it contains within. <laughs> you fail and accidentally stab your eye out. <laughs> Uh -huh. I'm mostly well, like vibe checking it for like whether yeah mostly just like is this a normal does it feel normal or does this feel very out of place well, that's not really something that vibe checks can, uh, can answer you vibe checks can only uh, can only give you one word that describes either the true or false vibe of the situation the true or false vibe of the butterfly. <laughs> the true or false vibe of the butterfly is chill. Oh, okay. Chill it is. Uh, one other question, and I'll roll. I'll roll library use again if I have to. Mm -hmm. Uh, blue morphos as far as like occult history goes. Like, what's their like? I guess. Do they have any kind of significance when it comes to anything of the occult? Go ahead and roll either occult or that library use. Man, my library use is already... I've already got a check for that. Let me roll occult history. I, okay. This is perfect because this is occult history. It is. For butterflies. Uh, that is... Ah, that was a cult history. Off the top <laughs> of your head, you can't really think of any connection between butterflies and occultism. Okay. Is it okay for me to use the library use again, or no? I mean, you've on you only get one check for these things. Okay, that's fine. No, it's okay. Mm -hmm. That's all good. You know, it would be relatively easy to find out how those plants got there. And with them, the butterflies. Because yep. they're exotic plants. If you want to import them, there would be a record of that. Is exactly that is also kind of fair. Probably. That, uh, Raymond Shafter would know about. <laughs> exactly. That is also fair. <laughs> Thank you, mysterious ghost of Raymond Shafter. You're welcome! <laughs> I will go ask the physical embodiment of Raymond Shafter now! Okay. Also, what did, uh, did, did, what did we say? Did Like, Brexit didn't happen in this continuity, right? It did yeah. Not. Okay, so they're still part of the EU. Even easier then. They are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, everyone's still here! We're still eating soup! Ravenously. Is that good? Just ravenously eating soup right. and cheese bread. The soup is good, the company is better. Yeah. I will grab another mug of mulled wine. <laughs> Jeez. So interesting thing that I noticed when I was in the when I was in the winter garden. Hmm? Uh there are a fair amount of plants that are from would you say South America? Yep. Huh. There are a fair amount of plants that are from South America and also a native a South American native species of butterfly huh. from South America huh. in there. As interesting. Well. Oh, interesting. Oh, from South America? Maybe some maybe some caterpillars got on the plant while it was imported. It happens fairly awesome. free. It happens frequently. We had the same problem in my uh, my parents' mansion. One of them. The winter one. I know every, I... Once, I know every once in a while it supposedly happens with uh, <laughs> all sorts of insects and spiders no. and fruit. Hold on. What? Stop. Yes? Raymond just said something actually useful. <laughs> <laughs> Two mansions? Preposterous. No, Raymond, no. Raymond, wait, Raymond will the take... Caterpillar on the plant thing. <laughs> Preposterous. Right? That that was actually, like, smart and useful and... What? <laughs> Raymond will take another sip of the soup. What a preposterous notion. <laughs> I can't... I'm not... I'm, I'm not ready for this today. <laughs> Raymond will look over to uh, Dr. Dr. LeBlanc. Uh, well, anyway, it's uh, quite a regular occurrence when you import exotic plants. You can't always check for insect eggs and the likes, and normally they get overlooked. 
Yeah. I'll uh, look toward Patty. Uh, you know what they say about broken clocks. Yeah. Anyway, why is this? That means there's going to be another instance where he's nice. Where he is actually useful. Anyway, why is this so important to you? It was just something that I happened to notice. The butterflies kept coalescing around the chair, and I was just like, oh, okay, let me look up some information. You know? Well, that's fair enough. What, 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 what butterflies were it? Blue Morphos. Oh, yes, they don't belong here at all. They like it warm. They're near the equator, normally. What the fuck? Do you have some knowledge of animals? Butterflies? No, he he looks up. No, I have only the basics. My father collects them. Well, dead, of course, but you know, you pick how, up some, how, pick up some things. How is Raymond's fucking? How is Raymond's dad's hobby coming in more useful to my degree in anthropology? <laughs> what the fuck? Huh. I mean, it's not like you learn lepidopterology at at school, right? It's anyway. Anyway, they're not that rare, Dr. LeBlanc. They're fairly regular old butterflies. Very, very common in their habitat. And if they're in the greenhouse, I guess they thrive well enough there. Let me ask you a second question. If you're so, if you're knowledgeable about butterflies. Well. Do you know if they have any kind of like occult purpose? I mean, this this town, this house has been extremely spooky, and we did find a bunch of occult things around the place. I would not be surprised if they had some sort of occult occult meaning. I never heard of such a uh, thing. I know that there, there is a a certain butterfly that is associated with with death. I think, although that I may have seen it in a movie, but. Uh, no, I, I don't think the blue morpho is eh, like any anything special in that regard. I think that just tends to be certain cultures regard butterflies as a symbolism for death and rebirth. Well, that is outside my expertise, I'm afraid. But well, maybe that just, had, that just uh, like... while you are set or while uh, <laughs> the two of you are talking, Jonah is going to try to goog is. Uh, Googling hmm. stuff like uh, the name of that butterfly uh, or butterfly Morphos. symbol of death. Uh, <sighs> who considers butterflies a symbol of death? Just random shit like that. Hey, go ahead and several com use. What is the uh, default for library or the base for library use? I, think I believe it is 25. Yeah, is it 25? It is. Yes, yeah, it is. Yes, 25. 25. Yep. Small library use. No. Unfortunately, you don't yes, really find any specifics. <laughs> you do get so, a lot uh, of uh, you. You do get a lot of hits of like, uh, like the most um, the most common symbolism when it comes to butterflies and death. Uh, but there doesn't really seem to be much of a connection between blue morphers and yeah. and death or, uh, and occultism. Uh, Patty is going to roll for anthropology for the first time ever. Oh my god. Jesus. Jesus. Oh my uh, god. I know. Um, butterflies. Uh, in Filipino culture, they're considered uh, ways of dead relatives making your, their presence known or felt. You see a butterfly. Yeah, that, mm. that's about it, though. Patty would also know about um, the ancient Egyptian, I think it is, belief that the soul is a butterfly that flies out of the mouth when someone dies. That too. Oh, also, uh, I mean, there's also the of... there's also the general image of like the metamorphosis being associated with death and rebirth, because you know. Exactly. But I don't think that applies here. And then, I think some other cultures view it as a symbol of death as far as because they, they like to gather around corpses sometimes certain ones because 
They want the moisture that's in blood. And <laughs> also the salt. Yes, yes, that lovely, lovely salt. They crave that mineral. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, speaking in terms of, like, older cultures, uh, ancient Chinese and Greek, and the ancient Greeks thought that uh, butterflies are symbols of metamorphosis and the passing of souls. So did the ancient Egyptians. They actually thought that your soul would leave out of your mouth as a butterfly. That's like old stuff. Well, yes, but none Holy of... Holy shit. But none of that is related to the blue morpho who is nowhere near Egypt. Absolutely not. Holy shit, yeah. my degree actually was useful for once in my whole fucking life. Anyway, yeah. uh, Raymond will turn back to Dr. LeBron. Anyway, um, if you're really that interest in, interested in the greenhouse, uh, it should be a, a relatively easy matter to find out when those plants were imported. Because there will be Honestly? records of it. Honestly, yes. That'd be super helpful because it well, allow me to add more to the notes. Well, let's find, the uh, well, let, let's find the contact information for the nearest port or airport and let's see uh, I mean exotic plants would pro again? exotic plants would most likely come in via uh, ship so you would guess London or perhaps over the Netherlands but either way they would still end up in London or in Dover either way easy enough to google which will which Raymond will do you also have to remember that if these came in in like the 1800s, in like the 1860s, then that could mm. affect. If when if we any if more than if any port has records dating back 200 years, it'll be London or Dover. <laughs> if it came in from those, they didn't. Not not, I don't think it will be from that far back because that'd be a what lot of do? like constant maintaining of those plants and stuff. It would be. Uh, anyway, library, you succeed, so I should be able to find the contact information for those places. Oh yeah, you absolutely find the contact information for those places. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna show Dr. LeBlanc and just there's probably a like a phone number she can call. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Uh okay. I will do that next time, because it's getting late. Yeah. It is indeed. It is 1 a.m. We are about ready to wrap up. Let's wrap up. Yes. It's been over three hours. Yeah, that was a lot of note, a lot of extra info that we found today. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Haunted doll. We have to bury and burn it eventually. Yeah, no. Father Prescott was apparently hanged in the chapel, which makes sense for why he's mm. a fucking ghost there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's also why his ghost, like, the presence of his ghostliness was up at the very top of the ceiling instead yeah. of down amongst us. And why it also felt oh, like he was more yeah. reaching down to talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. Knowledge. Yeah, that's spooky. Knowledge. Yeah. Uh, we also learned that Gregory Hansen, uh, that Alistair Prowley... <laughs> was actually there was actually after Gregory Hansen. And of course you most Alistair probably was there. Most important right. information that Patty Green has some seriously questionable taste in music. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. I mean don't we all? Uh we also learned that the moment the chicken gives us something as simple as a vibe check, we will abuse the shit out of it. Oh totally. Yep. Well that's a fucking <laughs> that's a fucking given. No. Uh, what have I done? That is a good question. But anyway, it's been over three hours, so let's just let's wrap up. So it has. Yep. Need to go to the doctor tomorrow. Today, actually, <laughs> not tomorrow. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, get some sleep. Yeah. Yeehaw. Indeed. Good night, Fucking everyone. And good night. Good night. Goodbye. See ya. Bye bye. I don't want it.